What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Chaotic Ass. This is episode. Uh, are we on eleven now? I think eleven. Yep, yeah, it's uh, it's yeah. reached the double digits now. Yep, yeah, and uh, on this episode, we're going to be talking about something um, that really kind of encompasses a lot of different things. Uh, that being fandoms. Uh, <laughs> There is a lot to talk about with fandoms. Um, Let's but, talk about uh, of course, with me as as always is uh, Love of the Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, people probably already know who I am at this point, so I think we could just drop the names. Uh, well, th- at this point, more people probably know who you are than than me because <laughs> you you have more now more subscribers than I, than I do on my new Oof. channel. I, th- I think you have like 400. I've, I'm still like stuck with like 50 some odd subscribers. Maybe you're, you're. I've been trying to. I've been trying to come up with ideas that'll like bring in the viewers, but I. I don't know. Like I mean, I I could I could bandwagon and be like I'm gonna talk about like the uh, all this other this stuff that all these other people are talking about, but it's I don't know. And I'm, but at the same time, I'm like you know what? I don't I don't really want to be like uh, make videos like that. I, I guess it really depends on what it oh. is. Um, but then again, I also kind of save that kind of stuff for the podcast. True. Anyway, uh, if it's something I want to talk <laughs> True, about. True, but you can also like bandwagon and just make like really cringy sex jokes. Please laugh. <laughs> oh, that 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 always like that's always great. That's always a. Uh, I mean, uh, se- sex jokes like every now and again is funny, but if that's all your humor is, then it's like it gets old pretty quick. Same with like every like. Any, anything, um, any sort of joke, like if you just repeat the same kind of joke enough, then it starts to become Stable. really, really quickly unfunny. Yeah, and, like, a really good example of that is either Amy Schumer or Dave Cook. Those are the only two comedians that come to my vagina. <laughs> Let me just make some fucking... Amy Schumer just talking about about uh, her vagina and like politics and, and how she's basically like just having sex with multiple dudes and then Dane Cook making just, random fucking noises and go yeah. atheism. <laughs> like, can we just say that Dane Cook was funny in the beginning? Oh, he was, but I don't even know if he's relevant anymore. I haven't really heard anything about Dane Cook in recent no, years, so I don't. I don't know. No, he hasn't. But every time yeah. I would see, like, I guess what was it? Isolated incident, the one album that he did, which I immediately was like, yeah, this album is not funny anymore. He stopped being funny. <laughs> like I can hear laughter in the yeah. background. It's like pity laugh. Dane Cook's just one of the comedians where like he had his he he had his time in the spotlight and now he's just kind of faded into obscurity mostly. Yeah, that's what it was. It was isolated incident, which was the in my opinion the worst like stand up that he's ever done. Oh, you could also bring up the uh, those redneck comedians like Jeff Foxworthy about how he's just basically you might be a redneck. I, what would be the you might uh, be a redneck type of bullshit. Yeah, because that's all that's all he has really. It's like you might be a redneck. It's like yeah, we fucking get it. Please you know. That, but they, they they base his whole persona off of that, and that can work. But it's just like after a while, it's just like it, it, that can only last so long until yeah. like people are tired. Of it. Like good thing you mentioned that. Like I'm now I'm reminding myself. I used to like like built like the blue color comedy tour. I used to like that. Oh, I did too. Yeah, I like, used to think that was like, fucking hilarious. And now I just like, like uh, I mean, it, it may it might have been hilarious at one point, but now it's just like, I just don't really find that stuff as funny. Yeah, like the whole thing. maybe some of the stuff that um uh, Ron White did. Like I actually thought he was one of the more funnier, yeah uh, the more the, the funnier of the uh, of the like group. Ron White and Bill Ingvall were the only two that were actually good. Bill Ingvall was more like the um. The everyman, yeah. I guess, and not so much of the redneck. He was more like the kind of southern dude, but he was like a normal person in comparison to the other. Community. Yeah, which is why his stand up actually worked because he talks stories about his family and all that. And then you see, like, and then Ron yeah. White, he just talks about how he's a fucking playboy, but he sounds yeah. southern. Then you got Jeff Fox, where, like you said, he does the you might be a redneck bullshit, which is funny in the beginning, but gets old really quick. Yeah, because like that's like for that's that consists of like a big majority of his jokes. Yeah. It's just like you might be a red. Like, and then you have what's his name, Larry the Cable Guy. Uh, I mean, he would. He's yeah. another one of those that it's funny in the beginning, but if you listen to it for a while, it gets old quickly. Yeah, because he's 
what's the word like he's really one note one like, trick he's off. just like um yeah he's just like i'm just this fat disgusting slob like that's his whole persona but he, he happens to be yeah right it's now. like every time i like but well, then again if you see him off stage he loses that persona he's like get me the fuck out of here <laughs> Yeah, like it's all. It's like I wonder if the most of the people like for like Larry the Cable Guy and Jeff Foxworth. I wonder if they like you just see someone in the background holding up a sign, like "Please laugh at these jokes." I'm not paid enough for this. (laughs) It's like Jeff Bush, please laugh, (laughs) or or, no, no, please clap. I I always think, I always think of just the 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 Jeff Bush thing where it's like "Please Please. clap," like you know, just the pit, like pity laughs. Please Please laugh. Please please love me. (laughs) I need my wife hates me. Oh Jesus! Uh, oh, I'm I'm reminded uh, of something else too because the last podcast we forgot the steam machine. Oh, uh, for the console? Yeah, like we. we yeah, steam. well, I mean, to be fair, the steam machine is a pretty forgettable console because it just kind of. Uh, I mean, like, how many people own a steam machine? Really, like it's just all of this is like a mini. Computer. Yeah, like I don't own a steam machine, but but yeah, I don't own one because it costs seven hundred. Those those things were also ridiculously seven hundred to a thousand bucks. Yeah. Like fuck that! I might as well just go buy a computer and for five hundred and build my own. Yeah, and then I think Alienware and some other brands were trying to make their own like steam machine like thing and it just it quickly died because it was it's really not affordable and it's it, it's not the same as like a pc where like well and then, i don't know i mean correct me if i'm wrong but i, I don't think it, i think they just they were selling something pre-built to you and like you know the the appeal of building a p- computer is that you can basically uh you know depending on what you put in there it'll be more or less expensive yeah uh and you can just change parts out. Whereas with these, it's just like they're selling you a pre-built computer that I guess I would say you may or may not be able to customize. Actually, you can. Um, you can. I, I looked it up. Okay, Alienware did it. They made the Steam Machine and then the Alpha, which you can build your own. Uh, do not buy Alienware they products. Suck. I'll just tell you. That I, I will tell you that as like any PC gamer who's actually. A PC gamer will tell you, do not buy Alienware. It's overpriced garbage. Yeah. Um. It. it it's like Alienware is what it is what nor like turns the normies away when they try to get into PC like PC gaming. They look at Alienware. They're like, oh, I'm not doing that. That's ridiculous. Like, and they and they just kind of think that's PC gaming as a whole, and it's not. Yeah. The- it's just that Alienware is a shitty fucking company that tries to sell you like, uh marked up fucking like you know just incredibly like marked up stuff you know overpriced things this podcast um, by Dell. <laughs> oh, well funnily enough i am using a dell uh, dell monitor too. <laughs> i'm using the hp monitor and i have my fucking i don't know what best buy's brand was for their computers but i bought that one uh, I didn't even know they had. I I don't know who what it was though, but but I can easily upgrade it if I want to. Yeah. Uh. Oh well. Speaking of Best Buy. Um. And speaking of gaming of uh of gaming PCs. Uh. I remember when I was like first getting into like, uh, playing on a gaming PC like uh. Uh, but this was bef- like this. This was before I started like building PC, you know, like customizing my PC. Uh, some dude at Best Buy tried to sell me a, or tried to sell me my dad a PC, and he was like, "It was an HP, oh. and it was a pre-built one." And he was like, "Oh, this is a gaming PC. It'll run games really well." And it was like a piece oh, of shit. God. Like it wouldn't. It, I, I think it could barely like run. Like I think what was out at the time. I think it was like Modern Warfare Two or something. Like it had trouble running that. And I'm just like that's that's not yeah that just that just sounds really terrible. It was trash, uh, but like I I I did like um, I started learning more about like um, stuff you could do to the PC like when you're customizing it or building it like yeah hey, hey you could open up your PC and blow up the air or blow up the air blow up blow the dust the earth. stupid um, blow up the air <laughs> blow um, up the earth. you could open it up <laughs> and blow up the dust of your computer <laughs> um, and then and then that's how I realized there was like a fuck ton of dust caked up inside of my uh, PC and that you probably should blow the dust out of your PC every now and again otherwise. Uh, <laughs> 
it could start affecting the performance because of the amount of dust that's built up in your rig, which, you know, if you don't clean it for years, that tends to happen. Um, <laughs> and I also realized how terrible, how terribly small the fans were in there. And then I started realizing how shitty the other components in there were too, because I looked at the components, and I did research on them to real to uh, find out just how bad they were. And then when I realized that, I was like, you know what, I want to do. I want to switch this stuff out for good parts, and that's how I got into yeah. it. Yeah, because I was like, they, I can. Re- I realized I could replace these with something better. Yeah, unlike me, though, it's like when my family first got a computer, it was like, good lord, I don't even remember what it was. I think it was like an HP. And when it came to like games, they were like, "Oh yeah, you can do everything on this, and you can also play." Games on I, it. I've just learned to hate HP. Like, I, it, it might just be my bias against them because, like, the first, like I said, the first like quote unquote gaming computer I got was this shitty HP computer. First one I got was a um, laptop. So, yeah, but mine was an ASUS though. But that ASUS laptop was great. ASUS is supposedly supposed to be good with uh, with laptops. Yeah. And- Stuff like oh, that. it is. It's like a really good gaming de- laptop, but at the same time, it has its problems. Yeah, that's why I did. I I think we could probably save this for like the PC game, like some kind of PC game podcast. Oh, but we'll give a little note: don't buy HP or Alienware. Those two are bad. no. Uh, yeah, steer clear of those. Oh, actually, also Compaq. I think I think it was Compaq. Compaq is also well, shit. Don't Compaq? don't buy Comp. It's um. I th- it's another brand that sucks. Um, I think it's yeah. I think it was because I'm thinking Compact is uh, like I, they put the monitor and the computer in there. Uh, it's a brand of laptops and computers. They're they're pretty bad from what I hear. So okay. I just would stay away. I mean, I mean, of course, I would recommend you just build a computer. But you know, that's just me. Uh, it, it of course depends on what you're using it for. If you want a, a gaming computer, then build it. If you want a computer for everyday use, then eh, still steer clear of H, you know, HP or Compaq or whatever. Uh, I actually don't know what would be a good brand for just like an everyday computer. I would definitely say not not a Mac because you know then you're just spending a fuck ton of money. Let's find um, out. I don't know honestly. You said a good everyday computer. Yeah. Let's find out. Like, I'm actually gonna look this up. What is a good one? I maybe a Dell. Okay, know. best computers. For, funny enough, first one is a Dell. One of them is a iMac, the best all in one. Oh no, Fuck no, no, those. No. Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, what is it? Gaming, gaming PCs, Alienware. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. Dell, <laughs> Intel, Omen. Never I heard Omen that. was not that bad. Apple Mac Mini. Ugh. That's just it. Must be like yeah. Dell or other brands that I hadn't even heard of. Yeah, let's go with that. But I feel like most people listening to this probably are aren't looking for computers for just everyday use. But uh, no, they're, pro- they're probably Mac users, and they're just shaking their heads, going, "I hate these oh, people." Jesus. Well, good because I fucking hate <laughs> I hate Mac with mash, and Apple is trash. <laughs> Apple's um, always trash. Every, pretty much everything they make, their phones are overpriced. Every fucking thing they make is overpriced garbage. I agree. The only thing people buy it based on is brand is the brand. Oh, it's a, it's, it's just status. It's a status thing. Oh, I have an Apple product. You know, it's and it's just like really shiny and expensive, and that supposedly means you either have money or you're some high, you know, you know, you're so it's just some. I guess you're some important person. You buy it to feel important, or you're just a spoiled brat that has no real time on their hands. That's fucking children. Um, uh, yeah. But anyways, um, <laughs> let's okay. So let's uh, talk about the fucking Netflix controversy. Oh Jesus. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah. So, I think we've. Uh. Did we talk about this on previous podcast? We, or we talked about it like when it was first coming. When this fucking oh, that's yeah, right. When we it was did first coming out. We did. But, yeah. Okay, so I'm pretty sure everybody knows about the controversy at this point, but uh, TLDR for those who don't, um, a movie came out on Netflix, and um, it has it's a it's a French film, it's a foreign film, and it was made by a 
a woman of color uh, who comes, I think she's from originally from Bangladesh, I believe. I or, uh, it's a black Muslim woman. Um, she made this movie because apparently she was inspired when she saw like these group of girls dancing provocatively or something, and she decided to make a movie based around that and have it be some weird coming of age thing. Uh, the problem is that the the girls in this movie are eleven to ten year old girls dancing provocatively, and uh, a lot of the scenes uh, have uncomfortable close-ups of their genitalia and have them dancing like half naked yeah, yeah. for adults. Um, and uh, it's not that there are quite a few of these scenes in the movie. The movie in general is just very, very uncomfortable and all almost borders on well, pretty much like soft core yeah, child CP. Porn. CP, let's say it's CP. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> um, God damn it. Yeah. Could, are we going PC now? I, it, <laughs> I'm. I just don't want to be like put on a fucking list for saying. True. Like, I don't but, know. I'm trying to watch what I say with true, this. True, but, but it um, is that is what it is. It is a very tough it, it is, pizza. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. Like so. Uh, th- this has basically caused everybody to most sane people, I would say, to go what the fuck Netflix and uh, to talk about it and to cancel their Netflix subscription. Netflix has been bleeding subscribers and is losing a lot of money right now but apparently Netflix has decided instead of trying to appease the people who are complaining uh, they're doubling down and they are deciding that they're going to die on this hill yeah they've been Um, dying on this hill a lot uh, (sighs) I've contributed to this because first of all because I've just been disappointed with Netflix's selection there are some stuff there's some stuff I was watching on there but I'm just like a lot of the stuff I was watching on there I could just buy on blu-ray if i ever want to watch it again so i'm not really missing out as far as i'm concerned yeah. um the, the selection on netflix has just been kind of piss for piss poor for the most part in my opinion uh they take stuff off constantly and they put things back on and it's just um so it's just like i've just been disappointed with it and also just because of the controversy I'm just like, you know what? I'm not going to give them any more money. Uh, I'm just not going to do that if they're going to continue to keep something like this on the platform that exploits children. And, um, you know, I I just don't feel comfortable with that. I mean, I'm not going to fault people if they don't want to cancel their subscription, although I would I would definitely highly recommend you do if you care about the well-being of children and if you don't want to see any more shit like this. Uh, I would say it might be in your best interest to just go ahead and cancel that subscription and save your save your money. Uh, your money is better spent elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would actually recommend Amazon Prime. Uh, Prime Video has a really good selection of stuff. So it's yeah. this now. This is where I mentioned before that this will make the podcast interesting. I hadn't canceled my Netflix subscription yet. Do I, is it because that I hate? Is it because that I think that they deserve to lose money? On one hand, yes. But on the other hand, it's like they still got good stuff on there. I avoid cuties at all times for it. But at the same time, I get why people mm-hmm. are, upset, are upset and canceling it, like, full force. But am yeah. I going to stop? I mean, it's maybe, like... Maybe not. I don't know, yeah. I just... You know, it's like, yeah, you don't you don't have to watch it. It's, you know, there's plenty of other stuff on there. I understand that. Yeah, but exactly. It's just like, I, I just... For me personally, I just don't feel comfortable being, you know, technically funding them putting things like this on their platform. You know, I, I just which is true. It makes me feel dirty. Which is true, though. Yeah, because what was it? My girlfriend didn't even see the movie. Like she was like wondering, like, why the fuck people are hating on this movie? And she's thinking that oh, it's probably a movie about how society's over sexualizing children. Which I. Well, apparently that was the director's yeah. intention, supposedly, according to her. I mean, I, okay, I will, I will defend the director on one thing. That is a, it's a good thing to point out that we live in a society where children are overly sexualized. Just anything can be overly sexualized. And, but the way that she did it, though, was very bad. Very- well, yeah, like you're using actual children and, you know, you could have gotten, like, I mean... It it would have like I, I just don't know why it couldn't have been like actual like maybe like teenagers like get some adults that look like teenagers. Why does it have to be about children? Like I mean, and if it is about children, you you just can't like 
you can't do the sort of things you were doing with the kids and have like you know the the camera being like basically all oh, up, close uh, you know, it, it, yeah like it's just it feels like it, it just feels like counterintuitive like it feels almost like you know you want to send this message but like the way in which you're doing it like it, and like people have made the point like you like this point where they're like uh oh i want to make a movie about why it's bad to kill puppies you know so in the movie we're going to kill a ton of puppies or, or something like that i forget what the point was but it's like it's the same thing you know i, I want to make a movie that's uh talking about the dangers of this but yet it seems like the movie's going out of his way to promote it if anything yeah. uh because it doesn't it, it it almost never like puts it in like a bad light it seems like it's trying to be like titillating instead of just trying to say this is bad you know this is this is not good you know it's just we never really from what, the scenes i've seen it seems like we never really get that impression from the way that it's filmed yeah, they... uh it, it just seems like they're, it's more like they're trying to uh, show this in in more like trying to get you off more than it's trying to like say this is a bad. It's the thing. same thing with like the uh, the Last of Us Part Two when it came to killing dogs. Like, oh you, oh Ellie kills a dog in this movie. You should feel like shit because you killed a dog. It's like no, because I didn't have a choice to. And yeah, like it's it's just really obvious the reaction they were trying to get out of you. With yeah, it's that. like okay, honestly, a better better game that had dog killing in it was the walking dead season two that's was a bet that was a better one because mm -hmm. yeah you had no choice a dog was making noise and you had no choice but to put it down if you choose to yeah yeah like well that's the difference they give you yeah, a they choice yeah exactly. in, in, in last of us part two it railroads you into just like one choice you you have no you other choice kill this dog or or, or else you will be labeled as a dog killer. Well, oh, too bad. We do it for you. <laughs> yeah. But I'm trying to think of it like one movie that they actually do like sexuality right, which was Short Bus. Best way to like mm. describe it, it's, it's one of those things you have to either watch it to believe it or look up your movie sucks when you talk about uh, Nymphomaniac. Yeah. And it's like I, I understand, you know, people were pointing out because I was reading uh, that they, they've been they were talking about this on the Kiwi Farms, like the Cuties controversy, and somebody pointed out that like you know other movies have done this, and it's like, but they didn't do it like this. Uh, it, like somebody brought up the example of uh, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, Leon the Professional. What is that? It's um, it's the movie with John Renault. Like it's uh, about him being an assassin, basically. Uh, Pretty much in the movie, uh, a young Natalie Portland, Portman is in love with uh, John Renault's character, Leon, uh, in a romantic way. Uh, and she's like, I think she's 12 or 13 in the movie. Uh, so it's, uh, there's a director's cut version of it, which basically more heavily leans into the weird, like, romance aspect of it. But it never really goes to the point of her like showing everything or showing like toplessness or anything like that there are some questionable scenes i will say because somebody brought up a scene where she was like wearing uh, a bra i think uh but it didn't really go to the lengths of what i see with this movie so i'm not exactly sure if it's exactly the same thing although i will say it is questionable it's you know and that was one of the weirder parts of the movie it never really got to the point of being like uh me saying this is pretty much like softcore child porn. like i never thought that i just thought that was like a really weird aspect of the movie um but it never really veers into that territory yeah like what's another good movie where it comes to like because how old how old was a uh... Not the movie. How old was the character? Like John John Rene Renault, whatever his name's character. Uh, uh I don't know. Like uh, maybe probably like thirty. Maybe in his early forties. Yeah, it's like a, another movie that had to deal with it, but in the realms of it's consensual. The best uh, is Lost in Translation. Uh, it, it's the, um, well that's a di it's like a different it, it seems like it's more like she it's one sided like she's has this naive child crush this weird crush on him where he doesn't 
necessarily seem to 100% reciprocate. It's been a while since I've seen it, but it, uh, I, I would say like it's kind of one-sided in the movie. I could could be wrong. I'll admit I could be wrong. Maybe it's not, but from what I remember, it seemed like it was. Like he just kind of sees her as a naive child, which she is. Uh, yeah, very you know, naive. Uh, although, she, although of course, at one point he does kind of train her as to sort of like to be an assassin and how to use a gun and all that kind of stuff. Uh, other than that, he he still <laughs> sort of sees her as like a child, which makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just uh, I I honestly like I all yeah I was gonna say so they they changed the the title for this movie uh, to the French to the original French title on Netflix. They're basically like try it seems like they're trying to be sly about it, like they're trying to uh, uh, so people don't find the movie as easily. Um, because they originally just had it as the English title, but then they changed it to the French to like I guess to try to um, I guess hoping that people would like not find what, it that Leon? way. I don't know. No, 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 no. The uh, oh, the yeah, because it was like it was pronounced uh, Mignon's. Yeah, yeah, and then Netflix yeah. changed it to Cuties because apparently people were getting mad about it. Yeah, like they, they're trying to they're trying to cover their ass basically, <laughs> um, and I think people are realizing it's not working. So I don't know. I, I really don't know what's going to happen because of this. I mean, I just. Uh, I, I know there are politicians who are like trying to investigate Netflix for this <laughs> yeah. and all this other stuff. Yep. Uh, apparently, uh, the attorney generals of Ohio, Florida, Louisiana, and Texas wrote letters to Netflix to remove the movie. Yeah, I I don't know. A part of me wants to be optimistic and say like hopefully that they will remove the movie. But then the uh, I'm also kind of re- you know you also have to remember Netflix is is like a huge corporation they could probably just hire like a bunch of super lawyers to try to defend them somehow yeah. so I, i'm not sure because they had a um, what was it apparently uh, nancy pelosi's daughter actually criticized the movie saying that it hyper sexualizes girls daughters her age and it is no doubt to delights of uh pedos that the ones she persecuted or prosecuted like that's yeah, it's surprising that the daughter of the Speaker of the House is speaking like this. It's like, Jesus. I know, like, uh, I know Tulsi Gabbard came out here. Yeah, and she said it was a, a, a really big piece of cheese pizza. Mm-hmm. The, the worst yeah, kind of um, cheese pizza. The fucking, like, dollar yeah. store. Um, <laughs> I don't know. But it, that's, that's all we... That's, that's all we really have to say about that for the time being. Um, it's it's kind of, it's still like a situation that's sort of constantly being updated. I guess you would say there's just stuff coming out about it. Yeah. Every day, every other day. Yeah, that's why I, I just I would just wish that Netflix could like open up their fucking eyes. Oh, oh well. Speaking of which, uh, um, there is something else I could bring up about it. Um, at least it is bringing out the the weirdos and the pedos. They're coming out of the woodwork now, trying to defend them. <laughs> oh, I um, see a few of those on Twitter. Yeah, and are on YouTube too. Um, and uh, also, uh, if you go to Rotten Tomatoes, I, I don't think I've ever seen like a bigger audience critic divide than the the um, the critics and the audience score of Rotten Tomatoes for this movie. Uh, I think it was. Um, for a while, it was like four percent crit- uh, audience, and then like critics, it was like ninety fucking percent. Oh Jesus! I got, I gotta look this up now. Oh, yeah. ge- oh fucking the, Jesus! It's the, worse now. Well, we'll see what happened too. What happened is Rotten Tomatoes locked the score so that the the movie couldn't be uh couldn't go any lower on on the crit on the well not the uh critics the the audience score. Oh, Jesus. Like I'm looking at, yeah, 91 fresh on the thermometer, and then 12 percent for users. Oh, it went up. A yeah, lot. it did. Oh wait, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they're they're locking negative reviews. You can't leave negative review, uh, reviews. Let's literally. let's look at the. So they're trying to shield the movie. Let's look at the critical like critics' consensus of it. A thoughtful look at the intricacies of girlhood in the modern age. Cuties is a coming of age film that confronts its themes with poignancy and nuance. No, <laughs> no, Not exactly. No, no. I I wouldn't say that really. It's um. 
<laughs> the, the, I mean, they're they're trying to make it out, to make the movie out to be more than what it really is, which is, it it's not it, it's not some fucking deep commentary or anything. I mean, that's the, what the director says, but if you watch the movie, that's not what you know. That's not really the impression you're gonna get. Yeah, it's like I, like I said, my girlfriend watched like she's like she didn't understand why people were hating the movie like at the beginning because i listened to like clips of the beginning of it oh hang on hang on a second let, let me see if i can get her in on this one, <laughs> one second yeah okay we um, need your input on this because okay. yeah. we're talking about cuties right okay remember how you watched it yeah okay okay because correct me if i'm wrong at the beginning you're like this is actually kind of wholesome in the beginning yeah I beginning it was like mm-hmm. okay but like there was like nothing going wrong wholesome. until they got to the scene with the little tiny mexican girl I'm not trying to be racist or anything but they got to a scene with the little mexican girl she was doing her little cha-cha dance but her her shirt was a crop top and she had these skimpy ass little shorts on and it looked so bad and then i turned it off <laughs> Yeah, you you got to the point where well, she didn't get to the worst yeah, parts, which is near the end. Yeah, you didn't get to the worst parts at the very end where they do a dance number. I don't want to get to that. No, part. you don't, because it's on Twitter and people are saying that they were disgusted with it. Oh well, yeah, who would watch it? Pedophiles. <laughs> the, there like there are girl. pedos coming out and defending this fucking oh, yeah. movie and saying they got yeah, off. Yeah, pedophiles are defending this movie. Of course they are. Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a twelve percent. It's that they gave it a twelve percent. While fucking critics are like ninety one percent, they thought this was poignant and nuanced, given a coming of age tale of girlhood. No, that is all for the pedophiles to seek out little girls and rape them. Yeah, well, that. How is it coming of age either? Though they're kids, they're like they're ten to eleven year olds. They're not like teenagers. Yeah, they're not teenagers. It's not like super bad. That's actually okay. Better coming of age tale would be Super Bad or Youth and Revolt. Those are the only two movies that are or good. Or Secret Life of the American Teenager. Or Juno. Oh yeah, Juno. I love yeah. Juno. That was a good one. Any I found that but I wanted you guys to listen to. <laughs> oh, I think it's funny too because all three movies I mentioned all have Michael Sarah in it. It's funny. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, like it's um. It, it I, I I don't know I like I said I I hope the movie just uh, gets either taken off the site and even if it does I just don't know if I'm gonna come back to it anytime soon to be honest um, but at least it's like hey Netflix you did something right you know but I don't know they, and, and I mean you also have to remember they they would only take it off because they're losing money and they would just cave to pressure but surprisingly they're they're not doing that. So, yeah, I don't know. they won't do it. <clears throat> oh, you, you know what? There's one more thing I will mention before we get to the the other intro segment. Scott Pilgrim came back. Oh, yeah, because uh, what was it? The person that created the comic was reached out by Ubisoft. Because apparently mm-hmm. that was the people that published and developed the game. They came out to Brian O'Malley and Edgar Wright to do something for their 10 year anniversary. And lo and behold, Scott Pilgrim came back after being taken off the digital storefront for years. Yeah, it looks like one of those uh, River City games. <laughs> yeah, I, it's goddamn, I fucking don't understand how you couldn't play, didn't play this game. <clears throat> I, I didn't. <clears throat> you, you made me cough, that made me sad. But it's a good game, though. I highly recommend you getting it when it comes out this December, I believe. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> now we can get to the main um, main part of it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, the PlayStation. Event. Yeah, because I um, missed it. Did you at least like see what was announced oh, I or what was shown? I looked it up and I looked it up. Yeah, uh, there, there uh, there's not much. There's not much. <laughs> okay. The few things that surprised me were Final Fantasy 16. That surprised me. Yeah. yeah, and how it doesn't look like a stupid fucking like like what was it? Modern. It actually looks medieval. 
Yeah, I, I just don't know how to feel about it. Like, it looks different, but I don't know. Like, it's, uh, yeah, it's a medieval setting. Um, it's definitely action, uh, action RPG. Um, I, I, at first, you know what I thought it was uh -huh. at first? Dragon oh, Age. Oh, Jesus. It looked like Dragon Age at first, and then I was like, oh, this is fine. Because then I saw Square Enix, I was like, oh, this is not Dragon Age. Or you probably thought it was, like, uh, Dragon Guard 4. No, no. It's oh, no, if it was Dragon Guard 4, the guy with the moon, moon head would come out of nowhere and be like, hey, I'm here. Yoko Taro, yeah. yeah. No, it's it's definitely not. I, I would know if it's a Yoko Taro game. <laughs> it's, uh, it was definitely not okay, him. Okay, calling it um, now. That game's going to come out in 2023. Uh, yeah, because they say 2021, but remember Final Fantasy 15? There is a lot of games that were just like announced for next year in this conference. Yeah, like or they showed off more of it. And also, two thing, two games are actually coming to PS4. Actually, three. Uh, mm -hmm. Horizon, two, Miles Morales, and Odd World are coming to PS4. Oh, uh, so those are like cross yes. game games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, um, okay, so they did actually show off some supposedly gameplay for Miles Morales that was on the PS5. Uh, looked okay. Like, I mean, of course, there's more textures and the lighting effects are better. I mean, you know, yeah, it's a graphical improvement. Um, but I mean, it's like, you know, if I feel like if you were just to show, like, uh, any normal person, like, you know, this and compare it to, like, the PS4 version, it's like, or... Are you really going to notice that much of a difference? Probably no. not. Like, I mean, it's... I don't know. It's like, oh, hey, this is running in, like, uh... It's not going to be running in native 4K, let's be yeah. honest. It's, it's probably going to be running at, like, some something a little bit higher than 1080p. Probably 19, um, 1920 or 1980. Oh. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe somewhere close to 1440, if I could guess, but... Yeah. Um, it would be, like, a dynamic resolution or some bullshit, yeah. so... Uh, I mean, the game looks interesting. It's just, you know, it's Miles Morales. and uh, I don't really know much of anything about that character, to be honest. You know, he's just kind of... He's pretty much just the token black Spider-Man. <laughs> token. That's, that's, yeah, well, he's not really fully black. He's actually part Latino. Part Hispanic, part black. Yeah. I think it was Puerto Rican. Um, I didn't even know that he... I, I Well, I must have completely forgotten he had, like, electrical powers or something, because I was just, like, when I saw that, I was like, what, you, what the fuck? Did you <laughs> ever see Enter the Spider-Verse? I did, but I must have forgotten that part he about can, it. I don't know. He turns invisible like, oh. and has shock powers. I do remember that part, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, he has, like, cloaking. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, it's, it's basically, of course, it looks like the main, the main Spider-Man game from the PS4, just with, like, different abilities and stuff. Like, I'm... Some people were just getting like, oh, I'm so fucking hyped, man. And I'm just looking at it and I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay you know? Like, <laughs> that's that's always with a lot of these games. I'm like, oh, oh, DMC5 has a special edition. Okay. <laughs> oh, Vir they added Virgil. Great. I kind of figured they would. <laughs> you know, it's like, is anybody surprised no. by that? Like, oh, man, DMC5 is going to have Honestly, a I was not surprised. DMC4 had I would, one. Yeah, because I'm not surprised about it. Because, you know what's funny? The game was released last year. And now it's getting a definitive yeah. edition. I'm actually just surprised it took them this long to do True. that. True. Maybe it's just because they were working on Resident Evil 8. Either they were working on Resident Evil 8, or they wanted to be like, oh, hey, hey guys, I heard you like DMC5. I heard you like Virgil. Guess what? Yeah, Virgil's playable. Fucking Virgil. I guess them adding Virgil is like enough for people to just fucking blow their load. Huh. I don't know. Um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of, you know what I'm hoping though? Like, I'm really hoping it's like a free upgrade for people that already own the game because if it's not, I'm going to be kind of pissed. Okay, to be honest, because I'm like, because here's really what they're going to do. I I hate it when companies do this. That if you already own the game, why the fuck do I have to pay for the upgrade when people can get it free digitally? How? Like yeah. example, people like, had. I, I just fine. I don't want. The it's either you give it to me for free or it's very heavily discounted because that's kind of what they did with like the Demon Souls or not Demon Souls, the uh, Dark Souls remaster. Oh. Uh, when people who already own, own the game, they had the uh, the remaster for like a heavily discounted price. What was it? Like World of Final Fantasy. Great, I'm bringing up Square Enix again. When World of Final Fantasy, they announced that hey, there is a new update to the game called uh, Maxima. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah. There's more stuff to it. When do I get it updated? Pay fifteen bucks, then we talk. You fucking don't. 
Yeah, it's typical Square. Yes. I didn't buy it. I bought it when it was on like half off. <laughs> um, they also, yeah, but but speaking of Capcom, we also have more a new Resident Evil Eight Village trailer. It looks Great. bizarre. I just don't know. Like it's like it seems like it's like you're fighting these villagers that look kind of like they might be zombies or like maybe like half wolf people like because i know they're focusing more on like the werewolf aspect of it I or mean, something kudos uh, for them doing something different but they did something like this before. but but it, it, that's the other thing too like is it really different because it's like hey you know what i remember this resident shit evil from 4. resident evil yeah. 4 <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like instead of like zombies it was like people but they were infected it was the plaga like the the plaga, the plaga, plaga right? yeah yeah um, yeah, and, and then we, and then we got this fucking this dude, this Ethan guy, and it's like I still think he's just an incredibly bland character. Like he's just, you know, I, I, I like who the fuck even is he? Like I don't know, uh, Ethan Winters or whatever. Maybe that'll develop his character more in this game, but I kind of doubt it. I just, I mean, I they I'm could getting my hopes up. Maybe they'll give him the Isaac Clark mentality, which is like, hey. Let's make him really bland in the beginning, but make him badass in the middle. Could be. Um, it, it just feels like he's this new character that got kind of thrown into the Resident Evil universe, and you're like, I don't know who this guy is. He's just like some random dude um, that can somehow in Resident Evil 7 like regrow his fucking limbs <laughs> after being cut. After having oh, cut. I don't think he regrew his limb. I think they had it stapled to him. He or he oh, puts his arm back on his uh, uh he he puts his arm back on or something as he just pours the uh, he pours the Jesus juice on it and he like reattaches his arm. I don't remember Resident Evil Seven. I do because I played it. <laughs> Good for um, you. It was okay. Like it wasn't terrible. Some people think it's fucking like the worst thing ever. I was like, hey, it was all right. Like I feel like it was too short and like the. Uh, I, I appreciate the different approach, like, um, you know, it being different, but, like, I mean, it's it's not the worst thing I've ever played by any, you know, I, I would say I I enjoyed it more than in the RE3 remake, <laughs> let's just say that. Or, uh, better yet, RE7 or RE6. Oh, God, yeah. Holy shit. Or... Uh, it, it's, yeah, because, like, after RE6 ba basically being, like, a Michael Bay, like, explosion fest they uh, decided to like hey let's dial it back let's uh go back to being like small scale creepy house uh zombies and slight some puzzle elements maybe you know try to go back to roots and it's like they they kind of did where they also did some things differently too um and i appreciated that i'm like okay good you know they they did something it also right. gave us it a vr sense. mode for playstation vr yeah. owners Okay, so let's let's move on from that though. They they also announced, Five of course, show show Black Ops. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, I like how oh, they they showed up more of Black Ops Cold War, which I I like that they're mm -hmm. doing old wars, but at the same time, it's like, who cares about Black Ops? You, you know what? Somebody mentioned that like I thought was like I mentioned this when I when I first saw it too. They they literally like ripped off uh, Sniper oh, Elite. Geez. Uh, with that one scene where they did like, cause you remember in Sniper League where they have like the X-ray, yeah. uh, your bullet travels with the X-ray like headshots and stuff. It, yeah, it's like they basically like just took that, and then and now they have like an RC car or something. Like I, I just don't, like, I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, RC cars. They did the same thing in Black Ops already. It feels like an amalgamation of like other games, yeah, and it could be better. I, I don't know. But, I mean, gameplay looks fun, but I'm just like. Dude. Is this original? No. Like we've seen all this before, and I'm just I'm just not impressed. I don't know. It's like if, if I'll probably get it on sale, but I'm not. I'm definitely not going to get yeah, it. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Uh, when it comes out, um, like, like I mentioned, they showed oh, off more of Odd World Soulstorm, which looks great. Looks okay. I, I've never really played you know, much of the Odd World games, to be honest. They're pre They're good. You just got to know what you're doing at some parts. It's a puzzle platformer game. Makes sense. Yeah, that's the impression I got. What else? They show um, Death Loop. Yeah, I, I'm very yeah on that game. I mean, it looks like it could be fun. But yeah, I don't know. I like the style of it, but it's just it looks. Uh, 
It, yeah, like, I don't know. It's just, it's another game where I'm just like, I've seen this before and it's not doing anything to really impress like, me. Like, I kind of want to see um, more. Like, when a game comes out, I want to see what people think of it. Yeah. What? Um, what else they show? They uh, show. Okay. God of War Ragnarok. The Deep. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, it's like, um, I knew this was coming. Apparently, they're just. They must have just started development or something because they they just it was a teaser. They showed nothing except just. Oh the hey, Kratos is talking. And oh oh oh, oh ice cold winter Ragnarok. Ah, oh. <laughs> dad of boy part two. <laughs> the dad of the dad of the boy part two. It's the Last of Us yeah. part two. I'm glad I'm <laughs> yeah, glad they didn't show off Last of Us part three. I have to wonder if that's even going to happen. Honestly. It will because yeah, we know what the ending is, and they are going to do it. Yeah, they'll probably feature Abby, <laughs> everybody's favorite. <laughs> yeah, character. because apparently it's brutal the way she beats up people. And if that's the case, then part three is going to sell even less than part a two. harrowing ordeal. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so there was also obviously the which is probably the best thing they well actually no hold on a second well, they showed off the a five nights at freddy's game <sighs> fantastic five nights at freddy's game i'm so excited no it's on ps4 as well okay uh, I, don't I, give a shit. I just don't care i don't care like I don't care. okay <laughs> here's one thing one get one five nights at freddy's game i will try uh, Help Wanted, which is the VR game. I will give that one a fair shake. Do you think this game is also going to be kind of like different from the other Five Nights at Freddy's? It, or is it gonna be from what I've seen of it, it looks like Help Wanted, but more sci-fi. More sci-fi in a way. Mm. But yeah, yeah. it's just the same old shit. I mean, fuck, just throw in VeggieTales and that'll be fucking amazing. Oh, that's the thing that I don't like about Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, all the Five Nights at Freddy's games are just... The same. Feel very, very much the same, yeah. Yeah, they're the fucking um, same. Oh, hey, watch, look at the security cameras. Look and see who's coming. Oh. What's that? I mean, I, Fancy I can't fuck fault the guy. Bear, get like me. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I can't fault the guy too much. He made a formula that apparently a lot of people were just suckered into, and they just will continue to buy it regardless. Yeah, and but listen to people. Because he has so much fucking money now. It's just like... That, that must be just like a dream come true. Like, you make this game, and you don't think much of it, and then everybody just starts fucking buying and throwing money at you. Yeah. You're just like, what the fuck? It's like a game that you made, had no attention, then comes Felix and Mark, and they and they <laughs> both play the game, Here comes the and they get scared shitless, and most of the fans buy the game... Huh, it's not a dream come true. It's a fucking miracle. Yeah. Um, okay, so moving on from that, um, we also have the Demon Souls remake, which is the one thing that slightly like tempts me to getting a PlayStation 5, but not so much so that I'm going to buy it anytime yeah. soon. Um, looks really fucking good. We finally get some gameplay of it looks amazing like blue point is pretty much they've never disappointed me and this is no exception it looks incredible um like what i've seen in the gameplay i was a little bit concerned at first because it seemed like the game was a little bit too easy uh but then like yeah i i don't know we just haven't really seen enough to like i just feel like we need it like because this was just the intro area which is to be fair in the original it was also pretty easy so i kind of wanted to see like more of like some of the other stuff like we do get kind of like a sizzle reel of some of the areas the you know the areas from the original game but we don't get any like real gameplay or anything uh, of those areas um so i'm kind of like waiting for that to where we'll get like a real idea of like if it's going to be as difficult as the original game was yeah um because what i saw i was like Making it a little look a little bit too easy there, so I don't know. Maybe it's not representative of how the game is. Um, so I don't know. Uh, but then again, like I said, just that was just the tutorial area. 
Um, so I kind of wish they would have shown maybe a little bit of, I think it was like the Boletarian Palace or whatever, which is the beginning area, like first area. They should. Um, yeah. Oh, speaking of remasters and remakes and all that, I'm, let's t- let's talk about two of the ones, or one that was announced and one that already came out. Um, let's talk about the one that already came out and how fucking abysmal it is, which is Final Fantasy Crystal mm-hmm. Chronicles. Oh, is it really bad? Yeah. They did a smart thing and brought out the Light Trial, which is like the first three dungeons, and if you like the game, you can buy it. That game is terrible. The like, visuals are not that good. Like I get, I think they just took like the GameCube version of it and they just upped the visuals a tad. But they look, yeah. uh, they look choppy and bad. Wow. Well, that's disappointing. Yeah, I was, I was looking was forward to getting it too, and then I tried the light version of it, and I was like. Yeah, same. I was actually thinking about checking that out, but now I'm just... Yeah, just on. do that. If you want to know about it, just get the light version and then see if you like it, but I don't, and I can understand why IGN gave it a 3 out of 10 now. Yeah. Uh, what was Prince the other of one? Persia. <laughs> All that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, that game looks... Uh, it looks like a last-gen game. Like the graphics do, uh, the just I think it's mostly just like the faces. They look really fucking weird. And I know, of course, they've come out and said like, "Oh, this is the alpha." Play. And then apparently they've also said this is the art style we're going for too. So that kind of concerns me. It's just like I know people have made the the defense like, "Oh, it's the alpha, it's the alpha." But it's like if if you weren't far enough along in development to where you could show off like something that actually looked presentable. Why would you fucking show a trailer of it? Like, if it doesn't look up to par yet. Like, it doesn't make any like, sense to me. What they could have done. If you don't have it graphically, you know, the graphics done enough to where it looks good enough to show in a trailer, like, I don't think you should show it off yet. I mean, I would think that's just kind of like common sense, but apparently not. Apparently it's just like, no, we're going to do it. And the video has been ratioed, of course, because everybody's like, this looks bad. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Um, maybe it'll look better uh, when it's about to come out, but I'm not getting my hopes up too much because this is Ubisoft we're talking about. You so. know what they could have done, uh, and this would have been so much better. Mm-hmm. They could have just done a <laughs> teaser trailer, like have you hear the music from the game, and then and then you hear yeah. Yuri Lowenthal as the prince narrate, and then say, "Hey, Prince of Persia: Sands of Time remake." Yeah, exactly. You could have just done and, that, and then but... bring it out next spring, not next January. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, delay it a little bit or something. You know, I don't know. Whatever you have to do, just don't show it off if it looks yeah, like, like that. I do want to get the game, though, but not if it looks like that. I might. I might if they improve it, but I, I don't know. Um, I like the original game, but, yeah, I don't know. It's just, I feel like I am kind of disappointed looking at the trailer for this. I'm like, this is not what I expected. Yeah, you'd rather just play the HD collection on PS3. Yeah, there's always that option. Um, but yeah. Um, <laughs> so okay, it's back to the uh, the conference. Uh, uh, they revealed the price. And the, um, their answer to Game Pass. Which was oh yeah, that too. Yeah, so they're basically it's not backwards compatible. You have to basically do what you did. Uh, I think in the PS with the PS4, uh, you get PlayStation Plus and you get all these games that were on the previous consoles, but basically have to I, I guess you have to buy them again yeah. or something or, or just you know use the plus or what they did to now get was action. PlayStation Now is what it was yeah I just I I don't like that's one area where I feel like Microsoft wins they're backwards compatible yeah. their consoles are backwards compatible you play the older games on there Sony just cannot do that I don't know what it is I just I don't know if it's greed I don't know what it is they just don't want to do it it could be cloud you know. saving things I don't know what it is possibly but Really I don't know. Me. It's just same. Um, yeah. So they revealed the price. Um, the digital only it is four hundred. Uh, the uh, disc one is going to be five hundred, which is apparently what people expected. Um, honestly, in terms of price, I feel like it's like the One X. Yeah, it's comparable to the One X, but we have the One S, which is cheaper 
then the cheaper option that Sony is offering, um, will it be as powerful? I don't know. That might be the deciding factor there. But people are going to look at that price and they're going to be like, I'm going to snag the 1S because it's cheaper. It's like, what was it, like $300 in comparison to like 400 Yeah. But yeah, I think people are going to be snatching up the 1S, honestly, in, in my like, opinion. I kind of um, want to get the disc version of it because I want to collect the games. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, price is also going to be a factor there, too. Yeah. It's like... um you know is it it's discless but it's cheaper like you know i i feel like if i get it i i don't know i'm kind of leaning towards the discless just because it's cheap but the the disc version is like 500 dollars, and it and it's like is it really worth oh. it because there's like what 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 games are coming out there's that's the other thing you know what? I will do where are stuff. the launch titles i will look up where are the launch titles <laughs> like we have to wait till next year uh, you know, like is like what are we getting this year? Miles Morales. Oh great. Okay, um, here we go. I mean, it's just not selling me on the console. It's like you know, in comparison, honestly, I feel like the One X, the Series X, had a lot more to offer in terms of like launch titles. Okay, this is what the this is apparently this is what's coming out. Demon Souls is coming out. Next no, year. it's actually come out this year supposedly. Is yeah, it? it's been confirmed. What, what was the November 12th for? is when the console comes out. Uh, uh -huh. It comes with Astro's uh -huh. Playroom that's pre installed. No, no, no. I mean, like, when's the Demon Souls release? Uh, it's supposed to be this. Yeah, because the, the full list. And then they praise. They they raise their fucking game price from $59.99 to $69.99. That is bullshit. Yeah, uh, yeah. People are gonna have a problem with that. Too. And also, it, that could be another. You know what? That could be another thing that Microsoft might um, might try to compete with them on. Yeah. Be like, uh, we will have lower prices on our games. <laughs> I love how it'd be. It, it'll be uh, funny if if this console generation Microsoft just spanks them, and instead of you know how they got spanked last year by Sony, Microsoft just kind of turns tables on them. I kind of want to see that honestly. Like I, I, you know, and this is coming from somebody who is like been you know mostly just on the sony platform for years yeah. I, I feel like i'm done with fucking playstation at this point they've just kind of disappointed me with uh with the reveal of playstation 5 and also with this conference they haven't really given me a big reason to be like yes i'm getting the playstation 5 as soon as i can uh i don't feel that way uh the only you know what console i feel that way towards <laughs> yeah you mentioned because which has like stuff i'm actually interested in xenoblade chronicles 2 want to play it one. um uh, what what other games? Uh, they got uh, some of the Bayonetta I games. I tell you what um, I have. Like, they got Breath of the Wild, even though I could emulate Breath of the Wild, but it's yeah, like, like, you know, they got a lot of stuff, you know, and it's just like stuff I can only play on there. The Shin Megami Tensei yeah, 5. Yeah, they have that. I can only play it Deadly on Premonition 1 and 2. They have No More Heroes 3. Like, it's like, you want to talk about exclusives? It's like that's the only platform I'm really seeing, seeing like, yeah, doing like that. Nintendo wins on that. Even though it's like fucking Mario, Zelda, and Kirby, like most of their IPs, they still have fucking games for their console. And they don't yeah. pour it over to PC. They don't say, hey, hey, Horizon Zero Dawn, you want that? It's on PC now, too. You know what my recommendation would be for like people who are not sure what console to go with it's like i got a, I got an answer for you gaming pc <laughs> gaming pc and like a switch maybe i would say like, okay i would say pretty I would much say consoles go to switch but if you just want like overall playability probably pc anyway what else yeah. is coming out for uh ps5 uh astro's playroom which is on the ps5 by itself that comes with it demon souls mm -hmm. destruction all-stars miles morales both the original Okay, this is what makes zero sense to me. The original version of that game is yeah. fifty bucks. Ultimate edition is seventy. What is what's different about the ultimate? Is that just the different console version or like the PS5 version I of the game? I will look that up. Oh yeah, and also it comes with um, another game, Sackboy: A Big Adventure, the uh, ma their version of uh, Mario 3D World. Yeah, that's basically what Little Big Planet's always kind of been. All right, let's see. Okay, 
Okay, this, this is what it comes with. Standard edition of Miles Morales is 50 bucks. It comes with a base game. But it's a, available for PS4 mm-hmm. and PS5, and the PS4 is free for the next-gen upgrade if you decide to pick up the PS5. And okay. Miles Morales Ultimate Edition comes with the game and Spider-Man Remastered. Oh, so it comes... Oh, that's that's actually kind of cool. Um, so it comes with the... original the, Spider-Man for PS5 Spider-Man with all the here. DLC. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's not, it's not bad. I, mean, I don't have a problem with that. Um, that's actually a good idea. Yeah, but overall, was this console, was this conference good? Like, what would you rank it out of ten? Yeah. Uh, like number rating? Yeah. yeah. Three or four. Oh, I, I forgot to put one other game. Um, the Harry Potter game. Mm. Oh, oh yeah, I completely, I completely yeah. forgot about that one. <laughs> a lot of people were excited for that game. Eh, that's, I mean, that's probably a good game for Harry Potter fans. For someone like me who's not really into it, it's like I mean, it looks um, interesting. Yeah, like open world Harry Potter. I mean, it could be good. Um, I don't know. It, it looks interesting though. Um, yeah, it was, like I said, probably, probably like a four out of ten. That's um, yeah. Like, kind of meh you know not not really anything that blew me away is a lot of stuff i already knew about and um the only thing that kind of surprised me like i said was the final fantasy 16 announcement um honestly uh, for the games that they announced and what info they had given i'll probably give it like a maybe a six out of ten conference didn't look that great being... but the releases that or the games that they announced and what info we got it's actually good some things, yeah. Like, the Demon Souls um, gameplay, I, I liked. Uh, Final Fantasy 16, I'm... Eh, I, I'm not sure how to feel about it yet. Like, um... Uh... I don't know. Like, everything else, I'm just like... I just don't really... Uh, Resident Evil 8 Village... I'm also kind of iffy on that, too. I don't know what to think about it. It looks interesting, but... I can't really... I don't really have an opinion on it one way or the other yet because it's like we haven't really seen much real gameplay just kind of a lot of trailers and not really any gameplay yet so yeah. don't really know what to think about it uh dmc5 definitive or special edition uh it's like uh, i mean you play as virgil it's All like right. i don't know dmc fans will love it i i i'm a casual fan of dmc i just it's like People uh, would, they'll cream their pants because they get to play Virgil. Oh, Virgil, d- judgment cut me, Virgil. Please laugh. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. Like, because I'm just thinking about all the stuff I'm actually interested in. And in terms of that, I'm just like, yeah, four out of ten. Just, you know. Nothing too fucking. Yeah, it's just, it's just, just disappointing, really. Uh, I just, I don't know. Um, some people were were like, "Oh, we're Silent Hill." I'm like, "Yeah, don't don't get your hopes up." I already knew that wouldn't be fucking Silent Hill. I don't, what if you got the fucking dumbasses that are like, "When's Mar- When's the new Mario coming out? <laughs> <laughs> when's the next Halo uh, chief?" Yeah. Um. Jesus. Yeah, that's pretty much the PS5 today's PS5 conference. Yeah. Uh, some people are, are saying, "Oh, it's amazing," and I'm just like, "I don't see it, fam." I don't see it at all. <laughs> all I see is disappointment. Yeah. And with that, that's it for yeah. the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're, much. we're done talking. Uh, not it was it was pretty short, and not much was really not a whole lot was shown. So. Well, it showed off a lot of things, though. Fucking fandoms. It showed us who who the shills are, <laughs> who the people who are just. <laughs> I, I think one of them being fucking like I think Yong yeah was a huge fucking chill. He was probably chilling. Yeah, that. like fuck. This whole thing has been talking about fandoms. Yeah, uh, well, it kind of does sort of do it is like a nice segue into the uh, the fandom. Thing. Yeah, which is what we were talking about originally. This, this the Sony ponies. Yeah, uh, apparently I I made some stupid things like <laughs> apparently being a part of a fandom means you're a part of a subculture which that's eh, their definition of it I, guess. I mean that's kind of true um 
you, you are like in sort of a I mean you are technically like in a uh, in somewhat of like a subculture of of people who have like a specific interest in something yeah and there's a lot of pros to being in a fandom I mean you get to meet like really yeah. good people like amazing people maybe become friends with them you meet like minded people sure yeah um but then you also like you also meet very uh people who can be very uh disturbing what's the word? um well yeah that well and, and like if they you know maybe people that have different ideas about uh whatever it is you're interested in and how like uh what what's best for that thing let's just say and you have a disagreement with them about that and they uh you know and it becomes maybe because of that it becomes maybe like a toxic sort of thing and that's kind of what happens in certain fandoms where like they have different ideas of like what is good for something and what is bad for it. yeah and it turns into like this really divisive thing yeah like another great pro and con to fandoms like you get it it, it falls on the art like you get like a lot of creative art from both the negative the negative ones and the positive ones you mean like uh <laughs> yeah fan art like you get like amazing fan art that's like oh hey this is nicely detailed and it's actually captured quite well even the rule 34 yeah. one they there's some nice ones and bad ones <laughs> yeah well i mean it's it's pretty much everything though like there's there's good art there's bad art um but yeah they, there's a there's a lot of good art we get from from fans definitely yep Shameless plug, myself being one of them. <laughs> God damn it. When the fuck was that gonna come into play? <laughs> this I felt it was a it was irrelevant. <laughs> it was totally fucking relevant at this point. I'm a I'm an artist. I, I make uh on my stream deck. No, there we go. That's a piece of my art. <laughs> I draw I draw a big titty woman. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> but they have to be Asian though. <laughs> that, yeah, they have to be from Ghost of Tsushima as well. Yeah, that's it. That's definitely something. <laughs> like, like you see these fucking things everywhere, man. Like all forms of media can have fucking fandoms, and I don't know. Let, let's talk, just talk about the toxic ones first. That's probably the the easiest. Uh thing to talk about really because there's a lot of that. yeah like let's start off with the uh first uh, let's start with the one that i've noticed a lot like in the past which is like fucking sports fans mm. but yeah that's definitely one you'll probably see a lot more of if you just go out into the world yeah like you try to like go out to a bar. you ever go to a bar or any like restaurant that happens to have a bar you'll see them You'll hear them too. Yeah, yeah. Go Cowboys! And the Cowboys <laughs> lose, and then you can't, you can't fucking make a show boast about because they get so butthurt. All these fucking loud drunk people is cheering, or just either like screaming at the TV or fucking like I don't know. I mean, it's like, and people are like, "Oh, but you get really like loud when you play video games when you drink and you get loud when you play that." How's that any different? I'm just well, like, okay. The difference is between sports fans like looking at a TV and playing something on a TV. You get mad at the game because you try to do something correct, and the game's like, nah, nah. You you you, you are in control of that character. You are like influencing what happens in the game whereas like where whereas like you watch the sport you know you you don't control what those people are doing you're just watching them do it and you're just like hoping something good was going to happen basically and you're acting like you know you, I don't know I just I, I've never really understood like to an extent like yeah I kind of understand but it's just I don't know I just don't like, I get, get it, it. like it's, your passion like it could be like a generational thing like their dad and their dad yeah. for theirs like they like this certain team and you like pass on this tradition like them just being like oh that that's my team i'm like well i mean you're not a part I mean, of the team you're just kind of do you own a part of their stock do you own any of them yeah. like oh god i'm i'm reminding my ex-wife now her fucking stepdad 
had a fucking shrine dedicated to the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> and oh my fucking God, hearing that man rage over the Dallas Cowboys fucking up every single time. Oh my fucking God. It was either amusing <laughs> or terrifying. Did he just get like really intense? Uh, let's just say that he had a lot of alcohol in the system. So yeah. Oh no. Yeah, that's never good. Um, yeah, but sports fans like really, it's just the the biggest problem with that is they're just really annoying to me. Like I just I try to tune them out sometimes when that whenever like I happen to be at a restaurant that has a bar and they get like super fucking loud. I, I try to tune it out. I'm like, okay, you're not here. You're not here. I'm trying <laughs> to go on a date. It's hard. It, it's really hard when they get, like, really rowdy and shit. And they're just, like, you know, just fucking, like, yeah, let's fucking go. And I'm just, like, it, it's just a fucking football game, dude. Calm down. <laughs> and then you, what is it? Like, you fucking, like, hear. It's like you're not even there. Like, you're not even at the stadium. You're you're at a fucking bar. You're at a fucking like, you know, you're, you're, they can't hear you're at you. the bar because your wife kicked you out for watching football too much and yet i'll bet we're just gonna get like a lot of angry sports fans in the comments <laughs> I, like okay here's here's our thing here's the one thing that i really want to see i want to see a major sports fan get mad at a game of golf golf is like the one game where it's like the at least the fans are like not like i would say i guess you could also kind of divide it up by like sport. what kind of sport it is like because with golf it's just like golf. they're Calming. they're pretty calm like they just clap or you know make some noise but not like the same as like football people or basketball okay. or whatever e- even hockey too like and hockey baseball like hockey fan baseball yeah oh. like pretty much every other sport is kind of like that except for golf golf is just like calm like just very not really like not much noise just very quiet very quiet just which was understandable considering the kind of sport it is yeah like i don't hate i don't hate the fucking sports themselves but it's just like the fans like i've the worst fans i've seen are basketball and football fans yeah those yeah, they're those are probably like the rowdiest. But I mean, I, I think hockey fans can be too, though, because hockey fans get apparently get can get very well, violent. hockey is a vi- very violent sport. You get to smack people with sticks, yeah. push people against the glass, basically, just like yeah, it, it's pretty violent. Yeah, like <laughs> baseball, it's like what the only violent thing that you see is like a player like gets tripped and they start a fight on the field. That's it. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, other than that, there's not... It doesn't get too violent. I would love um, to see, like, someone get mad at a golf game. Like, they're trying to, like, putt. They're trying to putt. Like, oh, God damn it, Tiger, you fucked it up. Yeah, they just start, like, <laughs> They start to get the TV, and the people are, like, calm sport, those calm golf watchers. T- Tiger Woods loses. People start riding. Like, all the all, all the old people, or, or the, the old men start, start riding in the street. <laughs> I think they did that whenever he cheated on his wife. <laughs> please laugh at my jokes. I'm sorry. Pity laughter, please. Please laugh. Pity laugh. Oh, Jesus. Um. Yeah, there's really just not too much to go into with sports, though, because it's like it, it's just a fandom that I just don't really engage with. So it's not there's like not too much I can really say about them. Yeah, it's um, like just tune them out. Best advice: tune them out. There is more I could say about like certain other fandoms. Um, one of the bigger ones and one of the more degenerate ones, of course, being the uh, the furries, furry fandoms. And bronies. Uh, something I could. Furries and bronies. I, I feel like those two things are kind of more or less the. I don't know. Maybe maybe not exactly the same, but like bronies are almost on veering towards the same level of degeneracy as furries. fucking furries. Uh, I mean, there are some furries that are not terrible people, but they associate themselves with people wanting to fuck themselves as animals. The ones I kind of have a problem with are the ones that walk around in fursuits and, like, uh, 
and just engage in like degenerate acts like you know fucking each other in the fursuits or 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 doing the weird shit where they wear like diapers or whatever the fuck they do <laughs> all this other no man the, the, yeah there, there's a subset of the furries like they're different they're different like furry things like in the furry fandom like you know the they, I think they're called the diaper furs. They wear like fucking diapers and they like shit in them. Oh god, it's, it's fucking disgusting. I'm now reminded of the fucking Medicur like whole thing with he was a. Yeah, he he went into a whole thing about it. There's there's a lot of different like uh, different people uh, things. Uh, what do you even say? Like different. Yes. Uh, I, can't, I don't know, like different parts of the furry fandom, oh, different, the, the, like, different rabbit holes. You can... I'm, no, I'm trying to think of it too. Like different fucking divisions of them, different guess, genres yeah. of them. Yeah, it, it's weird. It's like, um, good lord, I just, I don't understand how people can like this shit. I I don't know. I just don't get it. Like I don't really like. There are people who. I don't who are turned on by like the cartoon animals, cartoon anthropomorphic uh, animal characters and cartoons and shit. Yeah. Um. But uh, there's uh, yeah, and I can't really say much about this fan base either. But there's you know you also see him you see him all the time at conventions like the Homestuck fans. I don't even. That's an old thing. I don't even know what it... I didn't even know what the hell it was. Like, I just saw people dressed in, like, really weird, like, the... As the characters. And then I looked it up. It was, like, some kind of web... web comic thing. Um, I... I had no... I don't know anything about it. I just know that I always see these people at conventions. I have no idea. Like, I don't know who they are. I don't know what it is. Like, I know what it is, but I just don't know anything about it. And I don't really care, honestly. Like, it looks interesting but I you always see people dressed up as them though and I'm just like I I, I just I, I didn't even know it was that popular I was like uh, apparently it is I guess or just a lot of people like to cosplay as them I'm not sure like it looks interesting though would I look at it and watch it or read it maybe if I'm bored probably not <laughs> Just Jesus Christ! What would you dress up as those characters? Though? Uh, no, because what's the point? Point. I look exactly yeah. like that. It's like, what is it? The main character. <laughs> one of the main characters has a sunglass, sunglasses, t-shirt, jeans, and a fucking cut like tennis shoes, and uh, carrying a sword. It's like, bitch, I wear that every fucking day. Everyone, yeah. okay. What if we? What if we're all just secretly Homestuck fans and we cosplay as them every single day? Please kill me if that's the. Well, case. well think about it. You wear jeans, you wear shirts, and you like with logos on them, and you probably wear shades when you go out. Okay. So everybody, everybody basically. in the fucking earth, looks like something from Homestuck, but. Don't those characters, like, have horns and shit, too? Like, I don't think I look like Do that. Do they have? I don't think I'm... I think I'm so. thinking of something else. Hang on. I think it was... Home oh, yeah. Now, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Now I see the horns. Yep, yeah. yep, yep, yeah. Yeah, like, well, just look at the cosplayers. They all wear that shit. Yeah, it's like, I just see, like, all the... Now Now they have, like, the horns. Because you, you, you already know, like, when you see them, you're like, oh, yeah, that thing. It's like, Jesus... They might do another thing of Homestuck, but it's like so disturbing. Great, really disturbing. People make art of other games and other shows of with Homestuck. Jeez. Um. Yeah. So I think we should probably move away from. I think we were talking about Homestuck, Homestuck, Homestuck fandom. I was going to mention about the uh, Sonic fan base, but we already know about that one. Uh. Yeah. It's the Sonic fan base is. I I don't know if I there are sane people within the Sonic fan base, but there's also a lot of crazy people within the Sonic fan base yep. too, uh, and they have a lot of the same problems that the furry fandom has, in my opinion. <laughs> Unless you're Christian, uh, where they have these weird fetishes and shit, and they um, there's just there's a lot of degeneracy in there. Um, we can point to examples like Chris Chan yep. 
and there's a lot of other people too that have been documented in the Sonic fan base that have done um, not quite as extreme stuff as Chris Chan has done, but have uh, on a on a similar level, let's just say, in terms of the art they've produced and the things that they've done. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh, have we like really like gone over the pros and cons of fandoms? Uh, I, yeah, I think we were like a little of bit like, of them. Yeah, but I figured that like, we could um, probably talk about that more in the mixed ones. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll just go ahead and say like the pros. You feel like you belong somewhere. You feel a sense of community with the people within the fandom. You know, you have a common interest. Uh, it introduces you to people who could be your friends. You know, because you share a common interest. Yeah. Um, cons would be like we mentioned earlier you know maybe two people have differing ideas of how something should be and they start disagreeing about it and it turns into a huge argument or some kind of drama um you get people who are incredibly like toxic within the fandom who are just um who just basically want to um who are who want to start start shit for whatever reason or uh, people who are maybe just like really normy within the fandom, I guess, um, don't know anything about about it, and just are like, I don't know, what would you say? They're just kind of, um, uh, they're just like normy. Yeah. You know, they don't know anything about the about it, and they want to change stuff. Like, you know, you just people that come in and they don't know anything about the hobby, and they want to change stuff. Yeah. You know, because I've seen that with some fandoms. You know, like the ones that. They're casual fans, but they want things changed, and most people, the real hardcore fans, don't like it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's funny because somebody actually made a comic about this, and I think it was pretty relevant with uh, this girl like watching people play D anD D, and she's like, uh, she reads the rules. She's like, I don't like these; they need to be changed. <laughs> you know, and and there and the one person's like no this is how we've always played the game and then she just flips out she's like why are you excluding me why are you excluding me from this i'm a is it because i'm a girl it's like no it's because you don't get it yeah and it's funny because a girl was telling her this yep in the comic yeah i <laughs> i thought that was pretty funny uh but it's it's that that's another problem with fandoms like there, there's this whole argument like should there be gatekeeping within the fandom should there not be gatekeeping like is gatekeeping bad you know should we keep certain people out of the fandom it depends on said fandom like one fandom that I will say that gatekeeping should have been a thing was Avatar the Last Airbender oh because of the Tumblr yeah because all these people as soon as it came to Netflix all these people are like saying oh most people don't like Asuka because she's a girl or is it Azula I forget uh, who it was Azula no but they don't like Azula because she's fucking psychotic yeah that's why a lot yeah that's why a lot of people hated this bitch was because she did a lot of fucked up things both to the avatar and her brother yeah oh it's not yeah, it's just yeah crazy. it's not the fact that oh people just hate her because she's a woman no they hate her because she's psychotic and she's a shitty really bad character yeah I mean with some people it's just gotta be like most sexism <laughs> oh she had really good ideologies I was like yeah so did Hitler yeah she was uh ideologies such as like what did she want to do again like she was just sort of a authority she, she had authoritarian ideas i'm pretty sure because like her like uh the fire nation was uh, uh basically they wanted authoritarian rule they wanted to rule over the other uh other countries or you know just kind of take yeah. over they, they were kind of um the more powerful nation so they just wanted to invade and just take over basically <laughs> That's fine. But the sad thing about that is that at most of the people in the Fire Nation, except for maybe Iroh and Zuko, were the only good ones. They all just cared about conquest yeah. and world domination. Yeah, they, they were they were technically like the villains. I mean, there was some gray area there. Yeah, there's some good people, but then they're like the mainly like they wanted to take stuff over and and uh, just. Yeah, like like you said, just conquest. Yeah, 
but I mean, I, I guess people just, uh, you know, because as soon as a, it's, it's a woman, then it's like, oh, well, you just don't understand her. I'm like, no, I understand her. I understand she's fucking crazy, mm-hmm. which is how she was treated in the show, which how she should have been treated in the show because she was. And she was she was evil. Yeah, and they did a good job of portraying her as evil, not the fact that... It's like, is there nuance to her character? Yeah, but it's just like she's as she is in the show she's not really that redeemable uh that's one thing i guess i could say as a somewhat of a criticism of the show would have been interesting to see her go through somewhat of a redemption arc i guess but that never really happens she just she's she's a villain and she just gets you know taken down yep. so you know i mean it's like there there's stuff we learn about her but like that makes her a little bit more understandable but she's still crazy mm-hmm. And apparently in the comics, she's like, I think I saw a picture of her like in that somewhat like she thinks she's in a straight jacket or something, and she's like in a wheelchair. So they made yeah. comics based off this. Yeah, like after. The oh movie. right. Kind of like in between. Cora. It was supposedly supposed to like connect to Cora, which is one of the reasons why I don't really want to read it. To be honest. God, Jesus, like this Cora was trash. Yeah. But the whole thing about gatekeeping, though. Honestly, I think gatekeeping is okay, but for certain aspects or certain things. I would like, agree. There's just like certain people, I think, honestly, it should be kept out because they're just fucking toxic and they just make every, the hobby shitty yeah, for everybody. That's exactly what I was about to say, though. It's like, if you want to get into something, hey, more the merrier. We can have fun with this. We can all get together and like talk about how great X is over Y or whatever. But if you just want to throw in some bullshit ideologies and just make it all about political bullshit, then I'm sorry. Why the fuck are you interested in this? That's kind of what's been happening with a lot of the not just fandom, but the entertainment industry these people have like sunk their claws into um there's different um development studios and uh different entertainment um uh, like a different um like marvel dc uh different game developers uh different movie studios even like they're pretty much everywhere like they've they've just infiltrated every like entertain form of entertainment and it's almost like you can't get away from them because they have to like these people that just have to shove their ideologies and their politics into all their into like, everything. Oh, let's see. Uh, you made a tweet saying that uh, you said the uh, a bad word. Oh, we we don't oh, yeah. like that. But let us work with you. And and these are the same people that engage in the cancel culture. Yeah, like that, James. Uh, that they just want to cancel people. James Gunn was a great example of that because he said something like decades, like a decade or so ago. He apologized for it, yet these people that hate fun and don't like when people redeem themselves, they bring this shit up and Disney fired them. But then, well, that's the other thing too. Like they'll bring up stuff that you said years and years and years ago, and they'll hold it against you. mm -hmm. It's it's almost like the it is really really is like the modern day witch trial. I could just imagine like if I came out right right now and said that. The people that like pineapple on pizza are fucking weird. If I said that now, and I know for a fact, like five years down the road, some crazy bitch will just come out of nowhere and be like, you said you didn't, people are, that like pineapple on pizza are weird. Cancel him. Most people are weird, have disabilities. <laughs> like, I never said that. <laughs> You're making fun of autism. I never said that. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like, it's just, they'll just like try to uh i don't know they'll, they'll try to say like oh yeah you're you're trying to you, you, you that that comment was actually racist <laughs> and i'm like what, what comment you know and like like anything they'll just be like oh this was actually like against disabled people this is actually like a comment about like and, and you're like no that was never the intention of what i said but then they'll just like try to come up with all this bullshit about what you said when it's not even true can, okay can we just say that the whole thing about sjw or social justice warrior mentality can that be considered to be a fan base or a fandom i um, the reason why i say that is because 
it attracts so many people into it. I would say it's a cult. <laughs> well, it's, it's some fan dumbs can be cults. I a cult or like a secular religion, which I've heard some people refer to it as. Oh God. Be it, which it kind of is. Like I mean, it's like it. It, it acts like a religion, like a fundamental, like like they act like fundamentalists, but they're not like religious. They they just um, it, it's like they're they're so fervent in their ideological beliefs, and they shun anybody and actively engage in like hunting down people that that deviate from their ideology. Oh, so uh, Christianity. If like, I guess you could say Christianity, but not I or, science, know, or Scientology, so, or just any, just any like, like fundamentalist sort of belief system. It it kind of just acts like that. I would say. This <laughs> is just. I mean, it's like, I mean, this is how this. I mean, it's it's not too different. I mean, it's really more or less the same as you know, it was just communism yeah. too. Because you know, if you look at the in history and how communists act, um, this is you know, it, it, it's basically more or less history repeating itself because they've done similar things. Yeah, it's like the um, whole history is now coming around. Now it's like <sighs> most people can't talk about history anymore without being deemed as something they're not. Well, people also want to whitewash history too. Uh, they don't want to acknowledge like the ugliness of it, and they want to try to act like have revisionist history about and also things. make people experience white guilt. Fucking Mike Henry, the guy who plays Cleveland, had to step down as playing Cleveland. Oh yeah, now they're doing this thing where if you're white, you can't voice black people or something. <laughs> That's like okay. Why is it that? Why is it that people are getting offended by this? It's like. Oh, they think oh, because a white person voice a black character, they it should mean that they're racist or they shouldn't be that way. New, it's kind of like a newsflash. Some black people can sound like white people. Yeah, but we live in a society where it's like no, people are supposed to sound a certain way, and I'm like, no, it's no. It's not kind of racist to say like he doesn't sound yeah. black. Or he doesn't sound black enough or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Like, that's not why people liked Cleveland. They liked him because he was just yeah. there. He was just... He was just the sounding character. He was supposed to like look like Morgan... Be a Morgan Freeman, quote-unquote, impersonation. Yeah, kind of. Like, he's just... You know, he was just supposed to represent... Like, same thing with Peter Griffin. He was just supposed to represent, like, the average working class guy who's just you know trying to support his family or whatever and he also just happens to kind of be a, a ridiculous kind of goof I guess he yeah. was um, well you're talking about family guy back then when he first was brought up. yeah well I mean I haven't watched family guy recently so I don't know if it's changed any yeah, I'm sure it has changed oh it's lot, fucking but, changed yeah. in a weird way yeah I, it used to be funny. Yeah, back in the Not first so few anymore. seasons. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, Why is it that yeah. we can't make a stereotype out of anything without being considered racist? Because uh, it's the current year and stereotypes are bad. Just Jesus. We're, we're not going like political bullshit now. Yeah, I didn't mean to go down this route. I think it's because obviously you brought up <laughs> JWs and have they're considered fandom. It was gatekeeping. Like, oh, yeah. Well, th yeah, these are, I would say those are people you might want to maybe not gatekeep, but uh, keep an eye on if, if they go into your fandom uh, because they'll definitely try to, uh, they're definitely going to be up to some shit. You know, they have those kind of beliefs and they uh, have that ideology. Yeah. What, this um, character's eating chicken? That's racist. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, so the thing about, of course, all, all media having fandoms. Uh, I think we kind of touched on that, you know, 
movies, video games. Uh, oh no, I I just skipped ahead. I kind of okay. I skipped ahead because it's like we're gonna talk about for all these medias anyway. Yeah, I think that much is a given. Like you know, yeah, everything has a fan. Yeah, and now we're just gonna. <laughs> Now we're going to talk about like the mixed fan bases. Like the fan bases, like there's toxic people in them, but there's also good people in them. Yeah, like, I'm going to start off with one that brought most people, like me and you, together, which was like the anti DSP community. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be a fan definitely... or not. Uh, yeah, it was. Or an anti- I don't know what you would actually it uh, community, um, maybe not so much a fan of like anti fandom, anti yeah, something like that, um, yeah because I mean you know, I mean like like we mentioned with Chris Chan, uh, Chris Chan created a community of people around him too because he was a uh, same same in the same boat as DSB where he was just like a, a locale, so there was a community of people who would basically just document his activities and uh, troll yeah. him. Um, and of course, with DSP, it created people who trolled him, made videos about him, and uh, talked about him. And created groups about him. Yeah. Like, uh, prominent groups, of course, being the uh, first of all was the KWO, the Kojima World Order, which became yeah, so, the Sons of yeah. Kojima. <laughs> oh, by the way, it has been official like, that, what was it, 13 days ago was the anniversary of the disappearance. Of the leader, uh, yeah. uh, well, I, I can talk about this too because I had some some personal experience. Um, so people have documented the individual known as Fred Fox, who was the former leader of the SOK. Um, he basically uh, turned out to be an A loggy spur, <laughs> which nobody should be surprised by because he. And I can tell from you tell you from personal experience, he ran the group like uh, I know the joke was it was the autistic mafia. That's uh, basically what it was because he treated it like he was the don of the mafia, like he was the like godfather or something. Um, you know, because he treated he, he started to get paranoid about people um, in the group. Who's going to leave the group? Uh, who's doing what in the group? Uh, he um, he he felt like he felt like he had enemies all around him. Basically, it's like. He was very he very unreasonable guy, um, but he would act like he was just this very charismatic guy too on his podcast and stuff. And you know, whereas behind the scenes, he's just kind of a scummy piece of yep. shit. Very. Um, I know with the uh, group that we still have around, which is the Infinite Ammo Syndicate, uh, he tried to do a um, when he was around, he tried to do this weird. Well, this is when we were still the. Uh, TCP, the cooperative podcast, which apparently was an effort on their part to kind of troll us by making a, our name similar to, I think, Total Biscuits um, podcast, which was, uh, for, I think it was like the cooperative podcast or something like that. Um, yeah. So basically, he tried to do this. Um, he felt threatened by our existence. So he tried to do a merger group thing, which was a way for him to basically. Uh, worm his way into the group and um, pretty much take over I think um, and I saw that for what it was and I didn't agree with it um, but yeah I mean if there's not too much I can say I mean I was in the group of the SOK group before I went over uh, to TCP which is now the IS and um, yeah it's, it was a toxic as fuck group uh, it didn't, SOK group uh, from what I saw of it a lot of arguments a lot of petty disagreements <clears throat> and a lot of Fred just being a douchebag to people. Yeah. So, yeah, it was not fun. Um, and uh, SOK in general became just very A-loggy, um, and it made, you know, the them being exposed by the Kiwi Farms uh, made, uh, you know, and Fred being exposed, made people kind of just uh, realize that, you know, this has kind of gone a little bit too far. We need to dial it back, which fortunately it seems like people within that, I guess you'd say that community, that it, it's still kind of a thing, but it's not quite as prominent as it used to be because, you know, the whole falling out with the SOK, it kind of, I think, put a damper on this whole, like, you know, on what the uh, 
anti DSP community was and what it used to be. Um, now it's just mostly like you know people make videos about Phil, but it's not like it's it's not quite as uh, uh, what would you say it's it's, it's not quite as uh, frequent as I guess it used to be. It's uh, he's not really that much of a hot topic no. anymore. And uh, yeah, people have just kind of been t sort of turned off from it because of a uh, partially, well, somewhat because of the SOK and also just somewhat because Phil, it's just not as interesting to talk about him. There's not really a lot of crazy shit happening with him right now. There, maybe um, recently with the whole him being in debt, that was interesting, but he didn't really get, you know, nothing really happened for uh, from it, surprisingly. Uh, he somehow weaseled his way out of that, but... I feel like, as with everything, it's only a matter of time before... Because I, I feel like it will eventually catch up with him. The question really is just when. Um, because apparently, uh, the last I heard is he had to take money out of his retirement fund to, like, I think... I don't know if it's all his money or most of it uh, to help fund his uh, business. So, he... I don't know. I don't know what's going to save him from that because it seemed to me he's just totally fuck himself if he did that there's no retirement for him yeah like that's probably one of the dumbest things I think you could do is to take money out of your fucking retirement <laughs> fund to uh, uh at least it seems like most of money the money you had saved up in your retirement fund just to help your fucking failing business <laughs> what business at this point well he considers it a business which I mean <laughs> I don't know how it's a it, to me that's not Unless you make it big on YouTube or something, that's really it's not a business. Yeah. It is, I don't know. Like, with people like Phil, though, it's like, I don't understand how that could keep going for so long. I mean, I will give the man this. He's somehow, he somehow kept it, kept it going for all these fucking years. But like I said, I expect it one day it will catch up to him. It's just, that, like I said, just a matter of when. It's he, he's somehow managed to evade everything so far, but he won't be able to do yeah, that for Yeah, last at the SOK. And that's mostly just because the SOK was a, you know, led by someone who was a paranoid nutcase. He outlasted Mixer. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, goddamn, the more we talk about him, I just get more irritated. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what it is with Phil. He, he uh, like I said, I think he rubbed a genie's lamp or something, and he's managed to, like, skirt by with luck. Some kind of crazy luck so far. Yeah, a lot of luck. A lot of it. Especially when he's that much in debt and he somehow got, around, got away with it. Yeah. Half a million dollars. Just Jesus. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> you probably make a whole podcast about Phil. Probably would. Because there's just so much to talk about with that. <clears throat> yep. Um, you were talking about the mixed fandoms. Yeah, I mentioned like the anti what else? community. That was one of them. I would say like the anime fan fan base. Oh, yeah. It's pretty mixed. Because you have your weeaboos and you have your otaku, and then you have the mix, the ones that are just casual fans. Yeah, and and I will say, like, not all weeaboos and otaku's are necessarily bad either. Um, there are some who are worse than others, and um, it's not really on the same level as, like, say, furries or something like that. Unless you find some like just total crazy fucking weeb person who I don't even know. Like, his weeaboos. Okay, so with people who don't know. Weeaboos are basically people who think that Japan is the greatest country on earth and that uh, they want to be Japanese, they want to live in Japan, they basically want to totally embrace the lifestyle. Um, which that part is like, I don't necessarily have a problem with, but a lot of it is just because anime. And it's like, if that's the main reason, I think you're, it's frankly misguided. Like, there are other things to appreciate about Japanese culture, and if you're just and if it's just because of anime, then I feel like you're kind of you're kind of missing the point. Like there's there's other things about Japan. Like a lot of Japanese people, there's a lot of Japanese people that don't even really watch anime or know what it is. And I think a lot of weeb's like have a um kind of like a um uh, 
idealistic view of it where they think like everybody in Japan is like fucking like just loves anime and all this other stuff but like apparently it's something that's somewhat frowned upon within the culture like there are sure there are a lot of people there that like it but then there's also a lot of uh, Japanese people who are very like old fashioned traditionalist and who don't like you know anime and all that kind of weeb shit yeah and there are people that do like it but then there are some people that just ruin it for everybody yeah yeah like the otakus and weebs like a lot of them do some really cringy stuff too like because you know because i think i think one of some examples you could come up with are are like the fat white girls that like dance to like an anime song or something or they just like they they try to act out like they're in an anime like have all these exaggerated reactions to things or or make all these like unnatural noises like the anime girls make and it's just when you do that in real life it's fucking weird like it doesn't it doesn't translate well it really doesn't at this point uh, i i think um i think there's this there's this one video i could bring up as a prime example it's called anime club it's just called oh, anime God, club I know. and i think you've seen that one <laughs> Yeah, it's like that fat girl, and she's just, like, dancing to the fucking, like, it's just some anime song, and she's, like, referencing Vampire Night and shit, and I'm just like, God, this, this is this is all the cringy <laughs> stuff that I hate about, like, people this, and certain people in anime, anime fandom. This is a dance. It's a funeral march. Like, that's the kind of shit that makes you embarrassed to be like, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I know exactly. I actually watched, or not watched, I've actually read all throughout that. I actually want to own the book. Oh, the anime book? club they actually made that into a book oh, yeah they did, they did. <laughs> let me see I just know about like that this... um that thing it, it it was a video on YouTube like I think it was for yeah it was for some anime club in like I guess a middle school or something or high school um uh, it was just these like teenage girls being really cringy and trying to advertise their anime club oh, Jesus Great, I'm trying to actually find Anime Club, and all I'm getting is Orin High School Host Club, Death Note, Akira, Assassination Classroom, Slayers, <laughs> Making Friends, whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> I think those are just animes of like high school settings. Anime Club. Club. Yep. Clubs. Casey, there it is. That's what I need to find. Is this book just like talking about the horrors of anime club? <laughs> it's like the like it's the Vietnam oh, War. Damn it, it's not on it's not on Amazon. Not not to shit on anime club though, because there are some anime clubs that are like kind of normal where they have like mostly just people that like anime and they'll just like watch anime and talk about it or whatever. And I mean, like that's fine. But then there are other clubs where it's just like. It's just really cringy shit. Like, you know, people going there cosplaying or, like, people going there um, doing whatever else that's just, like, really weird and just, you know, stuff like that. Like, that, that there's stuff like that is where I'm just like, no, no, I think I'm good. Ah, uh, damn. <laughs> Apparently, Anime Club, it's not on uh, Amazon anymore. Shit. Yeah, I didn't even know there was a book about it. What, what kind of book is it? Like, what is it talk? Uh, what have is it have you ever about? seen? You never seen Anime Club, the uh, the dub of it from no. Gun Show. Oh no, God. no, I don't know. that whole fucking video, or that whole fucking uh, what was it? Oh shit! Now I see exactly what you're talking about. That video. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Uh, uh, no, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, like I said, there, there's there are anime clubs that are fine, and then there are ones that are just like really fucking strange. Oh, that's, okay. that's that's anime club. I think I, I think I have seen that. Yeah. No, that's not what I was talking about. Um, though. I was talking about like the first video I other. see. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's called the Anime Club. It was five years ago, right? I think oh, so. Geez. You know what? Here. It was with the it was the fat chick, and then the chick that was that looks like. Here you dude. go. Here's the video for you. That that's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the kind of shit I'm talking about. That's not okay. How the. 
I will not have you representing my hobby like that. How the fuck does that have a hundred K like likes? Good question. I mean, apparently there's like over like 50 K people that liked the cuties trailer. So I think those people should be put on the list. <laughs> like I said, it's like this, this isn't a fucking dance. It's a funeral march. I think they were doing that dance from Haruki Yeah, it that. was. Oh, God. That's another thing. I I kind of liked that show, but holy God, holy Christ, all these fucking people have been, like, when that show was out, all these fucking people, like, these, these weebs, they had to do the fucking dance. They all had to do it, and they had to sour every, anybody who was interested in the show. They had to fucking... Deter them from watching it because they do the, the cringy horror piece of me dance. Jesus Christ. And it's just like, please stop. Please stop. Stop this. Like, this is this is really weird. Like I don't like <laughs> Who like who even likes this shit anymore? That's the one thing I don't understand is that do people still do this? Um and do you probably if you go to conventions you'll probably see something. Oh like no, that. they probably do that same shit to like fucking uh Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. They have someone dressed up as Kobayashi and someone's Taro trying to like Oh, I know oh, okay, hold on, hold on. I know a recent dance they probably they probably got like weaves dancing to as the uh what was that character's name? The Ch- the Chika dance or the Chiaka dance from uh uh Kaguya Sama Love is War. I'm not, you said Love is War? Kaguya Sama Love is War. It's the pink haired girl she does like a dance and I'm pretty sure like everybody's it's probably like the new trend, trendy anime dance. You've probably seen it. It's uh, it's the pink-haired girl just doing a dance. It's uh, the anime it's from is called Kaguya-sama. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Someone, You've probably seen that character in a lot of memes. Someone before. did a fucking rap, okay. and it it is mostly disliked. That makes sense. <laughs> Good. Yeah, but that's, uh, I guess that's the more, uh, negative aspects of the, uh, the anime fandom. Positive aspects would be, you know, hey, I like this show. Cool, I like this show too. Let's, uh, talk about what we like about the show and, like, you know, introduce new anime to each other and just kind of, like, casually also, enjoy it. nope, nope, I, I'm leasing the internet for that. Okay, oh, yeah. hold on. I was just looking it up because I was like, what dance are you talking about? And mm-hmm. apparently this was recommended. Okay. It's not that impressive. I'm sorry. Okay, here's yeah. the one thing. If you like anime, fine. But if you do the fucking dances from each anime, oh my fucking god, kill yourself. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, also, I like just... mashups, but make it mashups that's actually kind of funny. Like, what was that one from Macross with uh, September? Uh, oh, uh, this is America. No. Oh. Oh yeah, it's called Macross. Macross Delta. Oh, Macross. Oh, I thought you said. Okay, never mind. Um, yeah, because you were talking about mashups and like, uh. September, whatever. Um, but yeah, like, um, yeah, I've heard of Macross. Yeah, Macross Delta is what it was called. Yeah, this video. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, this mashup was actually not bad, oh, though. Okay. Yeah. Like, that, yeah, like, there's stuff like that where it's like, there's creative things like that, you know, I find with like, AM- well, oh, God. Yeah, we could mention AMDs too, like animated music videos. <laughs> I think those are, those in and of itself, those are mixed because there's, really cringy AMVs with like Linkin Park and shit and the uh, windows that were made with Windows Movie Maker and then there are AMVs that are actually like really well edited and have like really fitting music um but I feel like those are kind of few and far between sometimes yeah it's really like back in the day like back in the early days of YouTube usually where you'd see like AMVs with like Naruto where you'd have like Linkin Park or something in the background oh god 
Yeah. This, you know what? This is actually kind of perfect though, because we can actually segue it to music, like fucking AMV, FMV, like people that make their own music videos with songs. Like, okay, yeah. music fans as a general. I'm going to talk about them as a general. Some of them can be very subtle, civil, or fucking crazy. It, well, it also depends, too, on, like, what genre of music you're talking about, because, like, um, you know, like, uh, rap has its fans, uh, metal, metal has different, even different sub- sub-genres of metal have, like, different yeah. Uh, yeah, fan bases, uh, uh, rock and different varieties of rock have different fans, indie music, all this other stuff, like, they, they all have, like, different all these different varieties of people that listen to the yeah. music to these different genres. Yeah, it's like fucking. I had to get into an argument because the metalhead inside of me was angry because one of my coworkers said that Evanescence was metal. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, it, it fucking excuse me. It's like, what the fuck did you just say? And all of a sudden, they're like, that that like that hurts me. <laughs> like that just hurt. I feel physical. <laughs> it oh, it hurt all right. Evanescence is like all all rock tech. Gothic right? rock like, is what it's supposed like, to be. What rock? Uh, gothic rock, I think it was supposed to be. Because they started, they sort of. They played the "Bring Me to Life." Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like Birthday Massacre is more goth than fucking Evanescence. Okay, let's look up the genres. Okay, they're supposed to be. I would say it's more like all rock. Let, let's look at their first album because that's where it came from. Was uh, bring well maybe when they first started. They new metal, alternate, they, alternative metal, gothic yeah, metal. metal. Yeah, yeah, new metal. I'd say kind of. <sighs> They're not metal. Well, I can see why people would think new metal just because of the the bands they're usually like associated with, but. They're more pop, like well, I don't know, say pop. They they became more mainstream, um, so they have some more poppy sounding stuff too. Yeah, it's just yeah. Now nowadays they're being considered as a a goth pop, a goth pop. Ugh. Yeah, and now they have another uh, album. I feel like goth people would hate that association. <laughs> <laughs> of course they would. They would be like, "What the fuck is?" It's like I, I'm not fucking mainstream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They sold out. Oh, they did. I mean, as soon as their stuff was being played on the radio all the time, you know, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, like here's my thing with Evanescence. I don't hate Amy Lee. She's not bad of a vocalist, but when she's with Evanescence, it's not that good. Uh, yeah. When was she not with Evanescence? Because, like, I, I mostly, like, the only thing... She did her that, stuff. The only... Oh. Uh, uh, I mean, she did that song with uh, the dude from Seattle. Yeah, because they dated. Uh, yeah. And then th- she had that song, Call Me When You're Sober, which I guess was about, like, an ex of hers or something. Which was also was, like, Evanescence. Like, alcohol problem. Yeah. Lost in Paradise was also about, like, her relationship. How many songs has she made about her relationship? Okay, would you rather listen to fucking Amy Lee talking about her relationships or Taylor Swift with all her fucking albums? Okay, hi, Amy Lee. <laughs> yeah, it, it fucking exactly! Like, okay. Uh, that's another thing I fucking cannot stand. This is, I wouldn't say they're more toxic, but they're annoying. Which are the fucking Taylor Swift fans. The Swifties are fucking annoying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, modern pop fans in general are... I, I just can't stand, honestly. I just... Uh, I, I think even back in, like, in 2013, I just hated them. Because they, like, the people that listen to, like, Kesha and fucking, uh... Well, what else? Lady uh, Katy Perry. Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, uh, like, yeah. All those you other. will say this, though. Like, Katy Perry... Or not Katy Perry. Uh, Lady Gaga is, like, the only one that actually was unique... Yeah, like she actually has talent. Like she's actually um, a musician. I think she she can play instrument, like the piano. I think. Uh, 
Uh, well, I mean, I, to be fair, Taylor Swift can play a guitar, I guess, but I just can't stand. Like, I just it's usually it's mostly like the fans of theirs. They're just they're just it's mostly just all these normies. It's a lot well, of well, great. Apparently, Taylor Swift made a um, a new album called Folklore, which is a folk album, and apparently, people are eating this shit up. I'm like, okay, Taylor Swift. And I mean, t- Taylor Swift went from being country, like pop country, to just you know, pop. used to be you know, a country, country rock to rock, now to pop, not now to pop, and now she's doing folk songs. Well, she's also been talking about my feminism. Yeah, too. it's she's like Taylor. Like, we get it. You can play instruments. You can sing. Stop changing yeah. genres. Get her get off the pot. Stick to one thing and just... She can't stick with it. Like, stick to one thing and move on. It's... Nope. Can't do it. Nope, can't do it. Or unless you want to be like Suicide Silence, who made one album that tried to sound like Korn. Oh, Jesus Christ. It was horrible. (laughs) Like, if fucking... You expect, like, harsh guttural vocals. Now it's, like, clean vocals. Like, you cannot kill (laughs) some human... (laughs) <laughs> God damn, fuck. But then, oh, what was another good example? Like, Korn. Like, I don't know. I would say, like, any like any core bands, like metalcore, deathcore, I think some of them can have some good fans, but some of them are annoying as fuck. Yeah, I mean, uh, they can be. I, I don't really know a lot about the metal fandom, though, to be honest. I, I can tell you with Suicide Silence, when the original vocalist got to a Mosul crash and died, as soon as they got the new guy, they're like, Ew, the new guy's ugly. I, I miss Mitch. I'm like, does it matter if he's attractive? Isn't that typically the case when they're like, whenever like a lead vocalist gets replaced? Like, there's always people who are like, I don't yeah, like this new guy. Exactly. Scar Symmetry is a great example. I, I, I'm one of these people that says that when they you had to replace one vocalist with two, that's when you seriously fucked up. Yeah. Uh, well, like, uh, I mean, there are things where I'm just, I mean, there is examples where I'm like, okay, I, I can understand. I think that people complaining are justified. Such as with like three days grace and them like replacing uh Adam with uh, uh, the basic brother. This guy is. Yeah, he just it's just not the same. Doesn't sound the he same. He improved with the, like the next him. album he was a part of. I've only heard the one where it was like Painkiller. Um, uh, I for I think it was it was that one where that one song where it's like I am machine. Uh, keep climbing the mountain and like these other songs and I'm just like I just don't. I don't know. I'm not really feeling this guy. I just, I, I feel like I liked Adam better. He just had a better voice. I just, it's unruly. I mean, this guy's not terrible. He's not bad, but he's just like, if you're trying to compare it to Adam, I just feel like Adam had a better yeah, voice. Like a lot of people, just, when they, better. their album uh, was it Human, when that came out, it got. I think that was the one I was talking about. I'm, I'm not pace, sure. I feel like that was, yeah, that was from Human. But yeah. Outsider, he improved a little bit. Okay. Did did Adam go to like a different band or something, or is it, uh, um, or did he just uh, did he just leave and stop doing music? No, I think he still does music. He just does. He's just not in three days grace. Yeah, he just doesn't do it. He creates a actually shit. Now we got look. I don't even know what he does anymore. Cause I, oh, it, 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 you he know, does a uh, Saint yeah, Anosia. Anya. Okay. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I don't really have much to say about like the music, <laughs> the music fandom. So. Yeah, that, that, that's just it though. You get the worst of me whenever it comes to music. Yeah, I mean, I you probably know more about it than I do, so I can. Understand. Let's talk about one that we know about, which is gaming, but and also indie, indie right. game devs and fans. You'd probably know more about the indie games. Right, let's. Or the indie game fans. Well, the gaming one is actually quite simple, though, because we talked about it last time, like last time with the console wars. True, but yeah, yeah I think um, the uh, well, how, how the different consoles have the dedicated fan base. Yeah, brand loyalty, and you get the ones that are like 
you get the ones that are civil, like they don't care. Like, hey, I see you don't like so uh, PlayStation. That's fine. And then you get yeah. the ones that are like, yeah, like the level. Yeah, the ones that are civil. They actually they don't care if they play on an Xbox as long as they're gaming. It's cool. Yeah, but, but then you have people who are just like who just like they all they care about is like oh man Sony got a one up over fucking Microsoft Microsoft got one over Sony you know and it's just like I don't care man like I just want to I I just want a reason to buy a console you know get you know that's all I really yeah, care they're about treating like- but then some of these people are just so like they're just so like they're obsessed like it's like oh man oh man we got we got got to get one over on on the other the other yeah, company they act like incredibly you know? fucking bitter it's like they got I know Microsoft fans got incredibly fucking bitter when the Xbox One first came out. Yeah. But, and then after that um, and now now it's like I think the console war now is dying, but with the pricing and the release dates of these consoles, I think it just sparked it back up again. Um I it, it might just because this is like the launch of a new console generation technically but um i i just don't know like if if the consoles launch and there's just like not much there then it's like i don't know i just um because you know like at least with the ps5 it's like well, we don't really have that much coming out for the launch um for uh launch titles a lot of the games are kind of that are are coming out for the ps5 or coming out next yeah year. like so i can <sighs> The, the only like really strong one which is you know is apparently like Demon Souls um Demon Souls and maybe the Miles Morales game and nobody really talked about Sackboy a a fucking grand adventure or whatever the fuck that game was called just call it yeah. Sackboy 3D uh, World and you're good oh I'll yeah be- but yeah like dip- yeah but uh different game franchises and different game genres have their different fan bases like um you know, it's like I, there's this, and I didn't even know how like, but apparently there's just this this huge community around like the Resident Evil games too, which is kind of shocking that there's just it's just a a huge community of people that are just uh, in love with these games. Which I mean, it's understandable, but I just didn't know how much people like how many people like you know had this. Th- there was this whole community around them until oh. like you know. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. guess what? Apparently, Sackboy A Big Adventure is also coming to PS4. Mm-hmm. So, uh, okay, I'm going to say this right now, and Nintendo is guilty of this too. If you have a game that's supposed to be for a console, and then you go out and say, oh yeah, it goes to another console that we have as well, it's not really a launch title. Yeah, it's a it's a cross gen yes. game, and we're seeing a few of those. The only game so far that is a launch title that's actually seems to be Demon. exclusive to PS Five is uh, Demon Souls. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay, I understand what they're doing. It's kind of a smart thing that there are people that won't be able to afford a PS Five, so they're gonna be like, "Hey, hey mm. guys, I uh, I heard that you can't afford a PS Five. That's okay. Here's the PS Four version. It's not as great as the PS5 version but it's still just as good yeah I mean they did this when the PS4 first came out too where they had PS3 versions of those games <laughs> and Persona 5 did the same thing with PS3 and PS4 versions but if you yeah. wanted the collector's edition get the PS5 PS4 version yeah pretty much I mean and and the PS3 version apparently wasn't that bad either um I think a an example of a PS3 version being worse, a PS4 version being really bad apparently was a, I think it was a Metal Gear Solid Five, that was pretty fucking bad on PS3. I heard apparently. it was no, no, no. Uh, I can one up you on this one. Or yeah. Shadow of Mordor. Yeah, that that's another one I was thinking of. That one was also terrible. Zero <laughs> frames a second. <laughs> okay. I kind of hope that's not the case with like some of these PS4 games that are on PS5 as well, where like the PS4 version is just ass. Like that would just that would be pretty fucking bad. It would. Actually. But you want to know what was funny? 
how I know about Shadow mm-hmm. Mordor for PS3. You yes, played? it was a birthday present. Oh Jesus! I, uh, <laughs> I remember. I, thought, I remember getting Little Big Planet three and that game for both for PS3 because I didn't have a PS. Somebody hated you. <laughs> uh, I did because I picked them. Oof. But I really wanted to play it, and I tried Shadow Mordor. Got two like about ten minutes in, fucked up. Turned off my PS4, took the game out, and I sold it. <laughs> That's what you got to do. I just ended up taking it back to the store, saying that it was broken, and I got my refund. But I just don't know why you'd even release a game like that where it's just like unplayable. Or what they should have done is like keep it on a, on the PS4. Yeah, don't even bother with the PS3 version if it does, doesn't even run. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I was mentioning like yeah, some of these like different franchises even have like dedicated fan bases to them: Silent Hill, Resident Evil, Sonic, um, Mario. A lot of these other games like they just have like you know fan bases that are dedicated to those. Yeah, games. I mean, some of them are su- like subtle, but then some of them are just like, hey. Mm-hmm. We fucking hate you because you like X over Y. And then you have, like, you know, people who are fans of different game genres, you know, action games, survival horror, yeah. stuff like that. Like, you know, they're probably pretty big survival horror communities. Yep. Yeah. And also, like, game, like, well, you already said games. Or also, you can say, like, the indie game crowd and indie game devs. Honestly, those are the yeah. worst. Because they're mostly hipsters. Phil Fish is a good example of that because apparently he developed a fan base over Fez and he oh my fucking god this guy was horrible he said it, yeah Phil Fish yeah, is a dick th- if that game wasn't successful he would kill himself the game was a success personally I do like I do like Fez I think it's a really good game but but it was made by somebody who's a who's a douchebag yeah he's an asshole same thing with uh, Stephen Molyneux, though. I think he's also kind of a douche, uh, but he uh, he made Fable. Peter Molyneux, he had good ideas, but he really... Or he's he's really pretentious, I think, is uh, what people get on him for. Yeah. Like, he, he feels like he, he's going to make an amazing game, and he just turns out something that's kind of mediocre. Yep. Yeah. Oh, apparently, uh, what was it? Phil Fish actually did make another game. It's a game for the PlayStation VR called Super Hype Hypercube. I think I've heard of that. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look this up now, because if this game if the game is good, then I might try to... Okay, it has an 8 out of 10. 9 out of 10, 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10. Alright. Mm. I might buy it. Oh, apparently. An early game. God damn. The team canceled the Oculus Rift support after revelations that Oculus founder Palmer Lucky had bankrolled an er- internet shitposting organization backing Donald Trump's shit. Yeah, Phil Fish was one of those people that was, uh, when the whole Gamergate thing was happening, he was very much, like, anti-Gamergate. Oh, Jesus. So, I'm not surprised. He, uh, I think he was, a. Uh, He's in bed with people like fucking Zoe Quinn, probably literally and figure <laughs> probably. Oh, Jesus, like I could go on about indie fans, but oh yeah, no, good example of indie fans that are very toxic, but not really Undertale fans. Oh Jesus, yeah. I like Undertale, <laughs> but I'm not gonna sh- like spam shitty drawings that I made. Yeah, the fans have kind of turned me off from even, like, trying that game, to be honest with you. I was, I, like, uh, I was just, even I would tell you, you know, that the game is really good. Even Night in the Woods is really good, but the fandom kind of turns people off, because when you see Night in the Woods and Undertale, they go, oh, furries. Especially <laughs> Night in the Woods with its fucking Rule 34. Good lord. Oh, no. Yeah, because that is a has a game with furry characters. It's a good game though, um, but yeah, people get turned off because yeah. of that. Yeah, um, I I do eventually want to try out Undertale, but yeah, like initially when it first came out, like the fan base kind of 
throw me away a little bit. I'm like, yeah, no. And then someone <laughs> gives you the fucking game as a Christmas present. Oh, yeah, I mean, I would definitely try to get Or Night in the Woods if they do that, too. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I would recommend it. Yeah, I'll probably try it sometime. <laughs> Let's see um, if it's on sale. <laughs> doubt it. Nope, Night in the Woods is still... Oh, good lord. Night in the Woods is fucking mm. expensive. You get the complete soundtrack, too. How much 35 is 35 bucks, maybe 40 Damn. Let's try Undertale. Undertale, oh shit. Undertale is ten bucks normally, but with the soundtrack, it's eighteen. It's not bad. Cheap. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So we've gone over, like, kind of gone over video game fandoms. What about uh, collectors? Oh. Oh, collect. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about those. Like, um, <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Okay. So. So. Okay. So I will say, like, I, I myself, like, I like to collect things. I used. To, I went through a kind of a phase, where like I, I go through different phases of collecting. I guess like where I'll be interested in collecting one thing, and then my interest will shift to collecting another oh, thing. Yeah. Um. Like originally, like for a while, it was like retro games. I liked collecting like older PS, like these PS2 games. Xbox games, GameCube, uh, somewhat of the SNES and some of these other games, just just to have them, just to be like, hey, I have this. But the more games I collected, the more I realized I'm not gonna fucking play these, or, or that you know, like I'm just like, and also the more I realized <laughs> emulators could do this better. And I could run this at, like, a higher refresh rate. I mean, of course, you could run those games, like, on the original consoles. If you got, like, the different cables and you got the converter boxes and stuff, you could probably run it at a good resolution, a good refresh rate. But it's like, why bother with that when you can just get a decent PC and an emulator and run the game in a high resolution, a high refresh rate on, you know, on the emulator? And it's pretty much better than even if you bought all those extra cables and shit. I mean, I can see the argument for people say uh, saying, like, you know, I like to collect these games, I want to play them on, like, my HDTV with these uh, special cables or whatever, you know. I, I, I get that. But at the same time, I'm just like, there's a better, in my opinion, there's a better way of doing it, and I no longer really see the point of continuing to collect these older games, and they're just taking up a lot of space. So one day, I was just like, fuck it. I'm going to move. I'm just going to put all these in boxes. And when I move out, I might have a special room for them. But as of right now, I have no space for these. So I moved them all out. And I'm just like, I made space for what I started collecting afterward, which is all my mangu and my anime, which I have quite a bit of now. Uh, and it had, takes up a lot of space. Uh, and then I, I recently... I've started getting more into collecting Blu-ray movies. Uh, so I've gotten into that. And that's also starting to take up space. So, as you can tell, I like to collect stuff. Um, it's kind of a hobby and somewhat of an addiction. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so like, the, the, the point of that was just to say, I can understand where people are coming from being retro collectors. But I also want to say, it's starting to become irrelevant. Because, like I mentioned, there are better, more efficient ways of doing it, of playing these older games. And, like, you know, either use emulators or you can use these, those, like, emulator consoles they have. Like, I think it was, like, uh, what were they? Like, the, the retro consoles that people have where they emulate, like, SNES games and some of the older Nintendo games. Um, you could do that. So there's a lot of options with that. So you don't really need these older consoles anymore. Although, like, you know, I, I understand it's sort of the collector's mentality of, like, oh, I have the original uh, console. I have the original game. You know, but it's just, like, it's just, I just don't feel like it's worth it anymore. At least in my opinion. Oh, I agree. It just loses its charm after all. And, and when you get into, like, collecting these, it's like, is it really worth buying these like you know because some of these games are fucking expensive because they're rare 
and there you have these scalpers on the internet that charge fuck tons of money for some of these games like I mean yeah I can understand like the value of oh I have this really rare game now but it's like is it really worth paying that much fucking money to get this game or another case would be like example Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 how those games are kind of hard to find as well like if you want like brand new like Mm -hmm. why bother when you can get the one and two remasters on PS4 and Xbox One. Yeah, that's another thing too. It's like there's be- there's better versions of the game now. Like, I mean, I I get it. You want to have the old version, but it's like that's outdated now. Exactly. But also, I can agree with that too because it's also like when you collect things. Like, I was the same way. I collected retro games and I also collected movies, shows, music. And it got to the yeah. point where it's like running out of space. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you just like you don't have your own place and you just have a room. You're just like, fuck. I gotta improvise. Like I gotta find ways to to find space for this yeah. stuff. Like all these like that's the thing with me and like my DVD movies. Uh, I'm phasing out like all my DVDs and like replacing them with Blu-ray. So like I put all my DVDs in boxes and shit, and you know it's just don't even have them on shelves anymore. Yeah. Except for maybe like my anime stuff, but for like movies, no. Yeah, I, I understand. And then some of those Blu-rays are being replaced with fucking 4K because now 4K is a thing, and I have a 4K TV. So I'm like, why the fuck not? <laughs> well, lucky you. But I think like when it comes to like. I would say, like, the people that collect things, they use what they collect as a way to flex. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, that's that's one of the main reasons they do yeah. They want to be, like, show off their collection. Be like, look at what it's I like, have. Especially when it's, like, you get a collector's edition where it's, like, you can't find this anywhere else, and then someone buys it, and you can't you didn't get a hold of it. It's like, yeah, kind of sucks. And it- that's kind of how it is, like, with... Uh, Especially with, like, collector's editions that are, like, for example, like, with the Square Enix store that are, like, exclusive to that store or, like, certain other stores online that are just exclusive to that. Or even, like, retail stores. Oh, yeah. Even, where, like, because I know with, uh, example with me, is that and I feel like a total idiot, but, you know, I, I didn't, I couldn't figure out how to properly cancel the pre-order, so got it anyway, but, uh, yeah, the Final Fantasy VII collector's edition <laughs> I, I'm not proud of the money I spent on that fucking collector's edition because it was over three hundred dollars. Oh, but it came with the cloud on a bike, and I will say it does look really fucking nice in person. And I'm just like, I feel like Thanos and in Infinity War, where you know, like that scene where, where like Amora's talking to him, and she's just like, "Was it all worth it?" or whatever. <laughs> and I'm just. Uh, I'm just yes. like yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yes. It's like, what is it like? Okay, that's another thing that I don't like about it though. Is because you get the people that will say that you're not a real fan if you don't get it. Oh, you mean if you don't get like, like, there's, the, like uh... you don't get like the Tony Hawk skateboard edition where it actually comes with an actual skateboard deck. It's like. I, my, my defense for that would be like, well, um, yeah, I don't want to, you know, just frivolously like spend my money on like a collector's edition of something that, you know, I don't think I really yeah, need. I really... And and you know, you don't need it either. You know, that's the thing. You know, it's like it's a luxury item. It's something you want. Yeah. It's like another thing is like, why buy something? Because a lot of these people like they will buy something, but they won't use it. And it, yeah. and it makes you... well, they'll just put it on their shelves just to look. Yeah, it's like what is it? Like they won't even open it up either. Like the Persona Five Royal Collector's Edition, which came with the mask and all that. Like I have that on display. Mm-hmm. While the the first Collector's Edition, I don't even I didn't even bother putting the taking a bag out. I don't even use that bag because it's fucking tiny. Yeah. Yeah, like there are people that have like figures that never take their figures out of the out of the box. They'll just like put the box up. And I'm just like, what was the point of that? And why'd you buy it? <laughs> it's like, because I wanted to. 
I want to keep the packaging. <laughs> Never before seen, huh? How do you know it's even in there? And the collector opens it up and feels bad. I mean, to some extent, I could kind of get it. You know, oh, I want to keep it in mint condition. But it also, it's just like, I don't know. I find that kind of ridiculous. It becomes a really just, So why even buy it? Like, it's yeah, it is. Because it's just like, you're just putting a fucking figure by it. Like, it's... It's like, what was the point of even buying the figure if you're not going to actually, like, display it or anything? Because, honestly, Cass, it's because fuck you. <laughs> and, oh yeah, and also, while we're talking, the PS5 console got <laughs> on, was released for pre-order on Amazon, and it sold out. Yeah, I saw that. I mean, I'm, I'm not really surprised, but, be? oh yeah. I mean, like, you know, it's not surprising it's PlayStation. People are going to buy it. And, I mean, I, and certain certain Sony ponies are using that as saying, like, oh, man, look look how much PlayStation selling. Oh, oh my God. Me, I'm gonna you know, get own the haters. You know, and I'm just like, I don't really fucking care. I'm like, I'm not surprised by that. I'm like, I'm sure there's when a popular, you know, brand like Sony has a new console out. Yeah, people are going to fucking buy it. You know, it. <laughs> there are people who just don't care. They'll buy it anyway. Well, of course they'll buy it. They'll think anything's better than they are. Yeah. I, I just, I, I, like I said, not surprised by that. It's not, you know, I'm pretty sure the console will sell. It doesn't really nullify any of the points I've made about how the console just doesn't really have much going for it at the moment. And, I mean, to be fair, that's true of a lot of launch consoles. They don't really have, you know, Usually, there's not really a lot of games, but I mean, I would also say there's usually a little bit more than what Sony's giving us, though. So, I mean, there's that too. I feel like I said earlier. I think you know, Xbox Series X is offering much more in comparison. Yeah, like a better fucking deal when it comes to like Game Pass, but and backwards compatibility, something Sony can't seem to do. They never will. That's their biggest problem. And they won't because greed. They won't because they want to resell the games to you. Yep. All for a low price of seventy dollars. Oh great! Oh. I feel like I'm in Canada. Well, then again, also Nintendo is kind of guilty of it too because they sell their games for sixty bucks. Five years later, hey, it's still sixty. That's pretty shitty. Yep. Uh, but anyways. Let's fandoms. talk about the first one that uh, I think of that is heavily divided, which is DC and Marvel fans. Yeah. How do you fare? Um, oh, I I really don't care. Uh, but <laughs> I I've I've never really been a comic person, honestly. Like I I don't really have much of an opinion because I never really got that into comics. Uh, I know like there's some people that grew up with comics. I didn't really. Um, uh, I, I I don't really know. It's hard to pick a side there because, um, I feel like they both kind of have their strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Like they each of them, each uh, one of them do, but sometimes. I guess because you know I'm 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 an edgy boy. I'll say like uh, I kind of am partial to DC. I like the darker tone of the stories and the, you know. But I mean, Marvel has their share of that too. So. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and I also haven't really read enough comics to really have a solid opinion on it either way. Yeah. Did you read any comics growing eh, up? Not as much. Yeah, I, I've just never really been that much of like a superhero person. It just never really interested me all that much. I, I'm more into the... Uh, into just uh, uh, other kind of stories, not so much like superhero stuff. Uh, you know, just um, either like maybe mystery stories, fantasy stories, um, uh, action. Not necessarily superheroes, though. Superheroes just never really caught my interest. Uh, the only one that I guess I would say I'm more partial to in terms of superheroes, which technically this person isn't really a superhero, uh, but Batman. Uh, a lot of Batman comics I find interesting. But the other superheroes, eh, not so much. Maybe Daredevil. And Daredevil's not really much of a superhero either. He's just kind of a 
he's more like kind of a normal guy, but just with like certain like you know he's got the sonar vision and stuff. But aside from that, like he's a you know he's just a normal kind of blind, you know like a blind guy. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that he has like martial arts training. I don't know. It's like all of these. Uh... Oh, also Punisher. Punisher, yeah, Punisher's an anti-hero, but yeah, Punisher. Punisher doesn't have superpowers or anything. He's just a dude. He's just a dude that's, uh, you know, a vigilante. Yeah, he's just a big old dude with guns. Yeah, and that's what I liked about it. I liked that it was just, you know, a simple thing, and it's uh, it was incredibly brutal, and I like that about it. That was just it. Then Netflix came around and ruined it. Yeah, Netflix neutered him, I think, in my opinion. He just wasn't, at least until near the very end of the series. Uh, up until that point, it just felt like I just had to wonder if I was actually watching a Punisher show. You probably weren't. <laughs> so I'm guessing no comics that really come to mind in terms of stuff you were interested in or wanted to read. Eh, but I was thinking like more of like the movies and all that. That's what I was thinking. Oh well, there's that too. Yeah, because I was thinking more of the comics, but yeah, the movies too. Um, I I guess in terms of movies, I would say DC, just because there there's a lot more variety there. Um, with Marvel, it's just pretty much just the MCU, which I feel like in the beginning I liked, but it felt like um. Uh, it became formulaic. Yep. Like, a lot of the movies are just kind of the same. Oh, yeah, especially um, nowadays. The only exceptions, in, in my opinion, is, like, when we got to, like, Infinity War. Because uh, Infinity War kind of changed things up with Thanos kind of being... It felt, honestly, like Thanos was technically sort of like the main character of that movie. <laughs> and he was the one that won in the end. And it... I, you know, because I went in knowing nothing about, like, how the the Infinity Gauntlet comics. So when I saw that, I was, like, I was kind of blown away by it because I did not expect him to win. I did not expect them to lose. I was just like, that's fucking insane. Yeah, you wanted them to um, win. Yeah, because it did a 180 where it's, like, you know, usually they win. And it's, uh, and it's honestly, in a way, like, in some ways, I feel like, to me, that's where the MCU kind of should have ended. But... We know it won't, uh, you know, because then we got Endgame, which was my main criticism with Endgame is it's just a lot of fan service, yeah. very fan servicey, um, and the ways in which they defeat Thanos, I wasn't a hundred percent on board with. I thought it was kind of a cheap victory, in my opinion. Very cheap. Like it could have been better because it was was not Infinity War Thanos. If it was Infinity War Thanos, it would have been a little a lot more fulfilling. But it wasn't, and Infinity War Thanos just kind of gave up in the beginning of the movie, which I didn't really like the idea of that. It's like, it could have been so much better, but no. There's a lot of missed opportunities, I think. And there are some things I like about the movie, like uh, mostly the stuff in the climax, um, and the stuff with uh, Iron Man and his uh, what happens with him. I like that part of the movie, but the stuff leading up to that, I'm just kind of... Um, just like everything in between, I'm just uh, I didn't really like so much the stuff where they had to go back and get the stones. It just felt like busy work. It didn't really feel like it was like really interesting or anything. Yeah, it was mostly like the climax where I really liked it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, what about your opinions about the movie? Uh, honestly, it's like each one. Like I can understand why like, a lot of people would come from like, like a good example would be like the Joel Schumacher Batman movies. A lot of people don't really care for them, but then you'll have like the maybe rare majority or minority. Who it's like, hey, these movies aren't so bad. But I don't know. Yeah, some of some of them. Yeah, are good. like a Batman Batman Forever. It's not the worst Batman movie, but it was okay. And Batman yeah. and Robin, we don't talk about though that one. <laughs> oh, it was god awful. Or like the Nolan movies. Oh yeah, Nolan movies are the same way. You got people that don't like The Dark Knight, and there are people that love it. It's like all of that. I feel like more people love that movie than hate it, though. A lot of people that. Um, it was really like The Dark Knight Rises, where people were kind of, 
yeah, divided, I think. Yeah, that. that one was heavily, heavily divided. I feel like that movie is definitely the weakest entry in the uh, Nolan trilogy. Yeah. But that's just me. Yeah. Yeah, um, I just, um, I'm not, I, and, and like with the Marvel stuff, I'm, I feel like I'm more invested in the DC movies now than the Marvel movies, just because I, the only movie coming out now that I have any interest in with the MCU is the Black Widow movie, which is, I don't know if it's just indefinitely delayed at this point or what, but I don't know what's going on with that. It's probably delayed a little bit because of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I, I was just more partial to DC just because there feels like there's more variety. There's more stuff they can do with the movies because they're not really like limited to trying to have it all be like a cinematic universe or anything, which I think is good. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much my opinion on that. It's, I really just don't have much of an opinion when it comes to like DC and Marvel because... We've seen it too much. I agree with that too, though. Yeah, I, I feel like we're at the point now where like there's way too many of these uh, superhero movies. Yeah, and we really just need we need something else to take we over. We need substance. We need more. Well, we need more variety. Yeah. Which we're not really getting. Yeah, which we we never get that much. <sighs> I think I said this in a review, but I'm just like, I, I just find myself more and more just really liking the, the time period of like the 80s, because it's just like there's so much stuff you can look back on that time period with like the variety with movies and stuff. Uh, I, I I even said like, I think it was kind of like the golden age of horror, because there were so many different horror movies. Yeah, had. I, I agree with and, that. Uh, a lot of really good ones. We just don't really get that now. It's, uh, it's just kind of stagnant, it's sort of... Yeah. Everything has become like a problem now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think we just touch. I think most of the time we just rambled on like other things besides fan bases. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know. It's just like I kind of um, like go with like arguments that people have made and the the worst ones. Oh yeah. Like. So what are some? Like a very about? like a toxic mentality, which is like. It's okay if you don't get it or if you don't understand it. Like honestly, I hate this really falls under the line of like gaming and movies where it's like you watch something or if you play something but you're very Oh, you mean like you just didn't like, get it. That sort of a, argument. Like, a good you know, example of this. It's too deep for you. Okay, here's a good example. Have you seen Fight Club? Okay. Yep. Were you ever confused? throughout the movie until you get to the end of it. Not really. Like, I'm not going to lie. When I first watched it, I was heavily confused. Oh, yeah, maybe when I first saw it. Yeah, it's like when I first saw it, I was heavily confused. But then I get told by someone that had seen it way before I am, or I did, it was like, it's okay if you don't understand. That was his intention. It's like... To not understand. Yeah, it's like... I got it towards the end, but I was very confused. It's like, okay, this character is talking about what this character is doing. Oh wait, they're they're saying that he's they're praising this guy for it. Why? And then it realized, oh yeah, he's that guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I can to an extent I can understand. Like, oh yeah, you're not really supposed to get it because, like, yeah, in the sense that you're supposed to be like questioning it the whole time, and then. You know, when the big twist comes, you're like, oh, everything comes together. Yeah, and then I finally got it, though. And it's like, okay, I got it. It's like, did you finally get it? Yeah, I, I, I can't stand people like that. They're just, like, really pretentious. They're like, oh, you just didn't get it. You didn't understand. It's like, I'm it. sorry. But... And sometimes it's like, it's it's like they're talking about stuff where it's just, like, it's not as deep as they think it is. And they, like, want to think the movie is, like, really fucking deep and meaningful when it really probably isn't and they're like putting a lot more stock into it than really probably deserves yeah most people know what oh oh okay hold on hold on in terms of resident evil 3 this is another um argument that i've seen 
in terms of the Resident Evil 3 remake. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of them. There's a YouTuber called Mark After Dark. Um, he had a Twitter video. I think it was from his playthrough of the game. Uh, it's the part where Jill lifts the giant rail gun. Oh, I think I... And, and, he, and he was really baffled by it. He's like, how is she doing this? This is physically impossible for her to lift that rail gun. And um, people, of course, were, like, going after him. They saying, like, oh, my God, you know, this game has zombies and Chris punching boulders and all this other crazy shit. And you're getting on, you know, you're complaining about Jill being able to lift a giant rail gun, you know, and the series not being realistic. And oh, all this. the, the um, realism argument. It's yeah. like, okay, for RE3, they made the characters look realistic. They were trying to have a somewhat more grounded approach to it. You know, it's like, and, and it's just like that argument is kind of ridiculous to me because there's like, it's like, it's like, yeah, are, are there some ridiculous things in the franchise? Sure. But like the, and, and this is with everything. There still needs to be like some kind of like logical consistency. Like just because there are like, ridiculous things that are like something has a ridiculous premise doesn't mean that we need to like just start ignoring like okay so should we start ignoring like the laws of gravity and people are flying around everywhere or something you know it's like it, there needs to be like certain rules like certain laws within the <laughs> thing that make it you know make certain other things even though like yeah there are some ridiculous things within it like there still needs to be some common sense things that are adhered to i guess is is a you know a way of saying it uh you know there's there, there still needs to be some kind of like i said some logical consistency within that universe or something like if they're you know i was gonna like mention like the whole collector's stance on like emulators and like wanting fucked up things legal but i think we already mentioned that briefly oh yeah that's right that with the fucked up things legal um when we were writing the document i did mention about how Certain furries uh, are pro bestiality, like they want to have sex with animals. Oh yeah, that's why. And um, and I think there's a name for them. They're called zoophiles. Yeah, zoophiles. Yep. And now they're trying to make it where it's like you can't discriminate them anymore. Same with pedophile, like California. California did this. These these fucking maps or whatever you call like minor attracted people. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> they need a map, all right, to a fucking asylum. Show me a map to where they live, <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> now, now I have that. Sh now I have that fucking. Uh, what is it? That meme of Family Guy. It's like, why do you have that shotgun? I just want to talk to him. I yeah, yeah. I just want to have a conversation. I wanted to start a conversation. I just want to talk to him. <laughs> It's like what SJW say a lot. It's like, I wanted to start a conversation. It's like, I got a good conversation started. And bang, bang, motherfucker. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... What were we talking about with the fucking... Uh, uh, we mentioned the Resident Evil... Like, the Resident Evil fan base, or the... Uh, uh, all the zoo files. <laughs> Where'd you get Resident Evil from? Um, well, because we were talking about it. <laughs> zoo files and RE community. Oof. If that oh, happened, God. that would well, be important. there there might be. I don't know. <laughs> no, I think they like necrophilia. I don't know. <laughs> oh, but I um, think like other arguments that most toxic people. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, um, never mind. Yeah, the arguments they make. I wish. What about the like the whole micro transactions aren't mandatory? Like, oh, that. This is why I think this is very hypocritical because it's like you get the people that are, they'll come out and say, "Oh, it's okay. You don't have to get the the micro transactions. You don't have to participate in them." Meanwhile, same person buying micro transactions. Yeah, I mean, like here's my stance on it like if it's something that's optional and cosmetic then it's whatever but if it's something that you need and something that's encouraged to buy in order to like progress through the game then that's or, terrible uh yeah like that's 
like that's pay to win basically is what that is or and pay to win is a is a system that i can't fucking stand yeah i hate pay to win um, systems yeah like or in a game where it's like you know you could either do this the hard way where you play the game or you could spend some money and buy this thing that'll make things easier for you you know i think i forget what game did that i remember there's a game uh, uh, i'm trying to think if it was shadow of war i think that's here it is here it is uh shadow of war came out on october 10 2017 280 days later it's now free of all microtransactions Hmm. Is Shadow of War pay to win? Uh, combined beloved Nemesis Systems. Yes, the single player sequel had now embraced as a nonsensical pay to win. It was for, um, I believe it was like to get the fu- to complete the final fourth act, and yeah. now they removed it. Probably for the best. Good because. The game was fine on its own. It's not as good as the original, the first one, but it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but uh, in terms of arguments, it's like uh, uh, that you can't judge it until you you can't judge it if you hadn't seen it or played it. Oh, that's yeah. another. Um, that, it depends on the game. It depends on the game. It depends movie, on the like, game in my opinion, a good one. The pedophiles defending cuties, saying that we can't judge it unless we can see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, I don't have to watch the movie because I already saw the clips I needed to see. Did I enjoy the clips? The, the funny it's thing. Like, the funny. Sorry, yeah, sorry, I was going to say. The, the funny thing about that is, like, they're like, oh, you need the context, but it's like there's not really much context to be had because it seems like the movie just kind of uses the uh the story as kind of an excuse to get the kids to do the suggestive twerking yeah stuff. it's like what it's, it's sort of like the plot in like a porno you know like the, it's just an excuse for the two characters to fuck each other why why is she dressed up as a lifeguard and why is she why is he in a bathtub Oh yeah, like this that. Uh, what was it like that Lisa yeah, Ann like, porno or oh, whatever? I get, I got. You need a lifeguard on duty. This isn't a beach. This is a bathtub. <laughs> like, okay, okay. There is one porn that I saw. I didn't. I didn't oh I didn't god, we're going. In I this. saw the context to it. I didn't watch the. I actually have watched the porn, and it was actually kind of fucking hilarious. Which was like. Did you watch it for the plot? <laughs> no, well, in this case, yes, because the plot was actually funny. It was like this this black guy gets a call from like a girl, and she's like, "If you don't come and fuck me, I'm gonna get your friend Brandon to come get to come fuck me." And he's like, "Oh no, bitch, you better not." You just see him like run outside, butt ass naked down the street. Next fucking shot, he's on a Segway. <laughs> what? He's like riding it, and then another one. I think he's on like a scooter. <laughs> And then he gets there. Oh she's. He's like. He's like. I'm here, baby. And it's like. Oh, Jesus. Christ. I will say, like the the porn parodies of certain movies are kind of like unironically funny. Um, like they. I think the the Under Siege porn parody is pretty funny. Um, is that one scene where I think it posted on YouTube? It's like the the guy who's playing like Steven Seagal's character like comes in. He just like knocks out these guys and then he saves the girl and she's like who are you and he's just like stares at the camera he's like I'm the (laughs) chef (laughs) oh oh no great now I'm thinking of another great porn like porn parody it's like The Room I I think we should turn no last (laughs) one The Room when they made a parody of that (laughs) The Room was already like softcore it's like it's like hello doggy style my my personal favorite. You're not <laughs> fucking my mother. But it's it's like I think it's I like that. so fucking good. Like it's it's bad, but it makes Tommy Wiseau look like a be- a worse actor. Like the guy, the guy well, playing him. Tommy Wiseau does that himself. So <laughs> great. Now I want to see fucking. What is it? This is 
Tommy, what's up? <laughs> no, if I did, I wanted to watch the room. No, I want to see the disaster artist, dude. Yeah. When are we uh, going to do a rift cast of the the room porno parody? Uh, probably fucking <laughs> never, because it's porn. <laughs> it could be just the audio. And and YouTube would like slap my ass down. For that. <laughs> no, they'll just slap you on the ass, going, "You've been bad. Stop that." Susan Wabajack would come after me. <laughs> Wajiski. What? Come after me with the Wabajack. What? <laughs> Susan Wajizrag would come after you. <laughs> um. Anyways. <laughs> um, but they can't so... judge it if you hadn't seen it. Argument. I, yeah. I honestly think that this argument is stupid. It's. Tr it's like you don't really need to play a game. You can just watch it. And you don't really need to see the full movie to order to get the context of it. I, it's like with, with certain games, I'm like, um, okay, you know, maybe I should play the game. Like if it's a game where it's not like a really heavily story driven game that's like reliant a lot on like gameplay or something yeah. like that, then I'm like, sure, yeah, maybe I should experience that firsthand to get an impression of how fun the game could be. But, like, if it's a really heavily story-driven game where I could just watch it on YouTube and get a pretty good idea of what the game is, then I'm just like, well, I mean, do I really need to play it? Like, you know, th it, like, David Cage games, for example. Like, those games are basically just or, movies. Like, interactive or movies. Or Telltale games, you know, yeah. Like, you, yeah, it's like, you could just watch those on YouTube and pretty much get the same experience. Yeah, like any game that's any walking sim too can have that same effect. Yeah. But what really makes no sense to me is like people say that you're not a real gamer or a real fan if you don't play it or watch it. It's like don't have to. Like walking not the walking dead. The last of us part two. I don't plan on buying that game. I watched it to see how mm -hmm. It, how it fared out. I watched to see how it looked and played, and it's not that good. I hear yeah. gameplay is good. I, I did. Yeah, I hear gameplay is good, but if the game has a bad story, like The Walking Dead, like The Last of Us Part Two, then yeah, I'm not gonna fucking buy it. I mean, especially if it's a very heavily narrative-driven game, like, you know, you're playing a game where the story is prioritized, and, you know, it's like, well, the gameplay might be good, but if the story is shit, then I don't really feel motivated to play exactly. the game. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, yeah, I've, I've heard some pretty bad arguments from people of, uh, you know, if you're from different fan bases of like uh, certain games or movies or whatever. What? Oh, I think one would be great. It's like the Dark Souls community is like you. Oh, get good. get good. Honestly, I think that's more annoying now. But the ones I say like get good, and they also continue by saying that you're not a real gamer because you didn't beat this one boss, and all you're trying to do is ask for help. That's another community we didn't really talk about, the, the Dark Souls community. <laughs> that, Would you say that's more of like a mixed that, community? Or like that can be more here? of a... Well, I say mixed, but with like a 90% chance of toxicity. Yeah, I can see that. Because... It kind of makes the games, like, unfun to play, just because, you know, you always have those fucking people who are going to get on you if you don't play the game right, or, you know, you don't... You die too many times. Uh, you did. You found a certain boss difficult. Yeah, you found a bo this boss difficult, or <laughs> you didn't get the right item. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that shit. Uh, that's annoying. I mean, I enjoy the Dark Souls games and the Souls games, but yeah, the community can be pretty fucking toxic about the uh, uh, about the games. Um, I mean, to some extent, I do kind of agree with the get good argument but like it's not always applicable because there are some bosses that are just straight bullshit exactly uh, yeah that's like can you can people enjoy some games at least yeah but not really mm. it's like people can't really enjoy much games because of the get good material 
Oh, because they, yeah. Yeah, like, um, like we mentioned earlier, yeah, there are some games that just kind of get their reputation tarnished by the community sometimes. They'll just kind of be a bad representation of it. Oh, uh, like the Steven Universe, for example. Like, uh, the Steven Universe fan base are toxic motherfuckers, and they just kind of <laughs> gave the, gave the show a really fucking bad name, because they, they kind of, uh, they're just terrible fucking people. <laughs> like, they just, uh, ruin the show for people who might be interested in watching it. Well, not only are they terrible fucking people, but they also just make... It just makes the creator look at themselves and go, wow. This... I hate my fan base. Yeah. They, they uh... Didn't they bully somebody in... Yeah, because they drew a character differently. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's also because, of course, the fan base is full of Tumblr people, which are... Apparently, people of Tumblr are fucking... Oh, we talk about that shit, too. Pe- fucking people from Tumblr. <laughs> like, people... Like, the people that mainly reside on Tumblr and are just... Because it's... Probably just because it's full of SJWs. They're terrible people. Oh, yeah. I... Absolutely. And then they got rid of the best part of Tumblr, which was, like, hey, you can't post porn on there anymore. It's like, why? <laughs> well, there, there's Twitter for that. <laughs> Oh well. Yeah. Um, God damn. I'm trying to think of like other arguments that we've heard in the past or during certain fandoms. Um, you know, I, I honestly like I, I usually do try to avoid uh, getting into arguments with people in general, so I don't really experience a lot of this. Uh, I a lot of my experience is like secondhand, honestly. Just kind of seeing oh. it from my outside. I think I know head. another argument, which is like uh, when people say that I just I've been a fan of something for like a, a few months, and you get these people that come out of nowhere and go, "Oh yeah, I've been a fan of this my whole life." Oh yeah, uh, and then it's get to this big <laughs> like fucking dick measuring contest with you about it. Like, I would just be like, "That's yeah, it's nice. like that's nice." Do I care? It's like, okay. Oh, um, I know something I can mention. It's not an argument, but it's like, um, uh, like uh, uh, with, with the um, the fate the fate franchise. Because uh, obviously, I'm sure a lot of people from when I had my old channel up probably know me from the uh, visual novel read throughs. Technically, is what they were uh, of the Fate Stay Night visual novel and uh, me talking about the Fate animes. Um, but there's a lot of fucking people now that got into Fate because of Fate Grand Order, which is this, it's just, it's a mobile game and it blew the fuck up and everybody and their grandmother knows what Fate is now and they mainly just refer to Fate Grand Order. And it annoys me because nobody probably fucking knows anything about Fate Stay Night, which is the thing that kind of started this all. And I'm pretty sure you could like point to some other things where it's like, there's something that, um, that came before the thing like okay um i think another thing is similar is like the yoko taro games like you know we had dragon guard we had the original near and it's kind of like it, it kind of goes back to what you were saying it's like i can see both sides here because it's like i was a fan of this before you people kind of got interested in which i'm not opposed to but then there are people who are just like all they know is like like with the near games they only know Nier Automata, yeah. and they don't know anything else Yoko Taro has done. They don't. They are not interested in checking it out, they, you know, because they're not interested in like, you know, be like, oh, hey, what's Dragon Guard? What's uh, the original Nier about? Let me check that out. They don't know anything about it. They're just like Nier Automata. That's all they. Yeah, play. and then I'll, same thing with like. Well, I'm going to say this. Same thing with like Persona. Persona is another one where it's like, hey, here's Persona Five. Oh, Persona Pe- Five. People get shit, into yeah. it, and it's like. Oh hey, there's Persona three and four because when four Golden came out on PC, they're like, <gasps> there's more. Like I know with me, like in personally, like I know with me where it's like if I get into one thing, I want to see the other things that are related to that yeah. thing, or the other things that if it's in a series, like what came before it, what has this director done, what other things has this director done, what other things has the developer done, you know, because. 
if it's anything like what I just played, maybe I'd be interested. Yeah. Um, but then there are people who are just, they're just like, nope, I'm just going to stick to that one thing and I'm not going to branch out outside of that and I don't care. And to me, I just feel like that's really narrow-minded. I just don't like that. I, I remember the same thing besides Persona. I remember when Fire Emblem Awakening came out many, many years ago, like seven years ago. And I saw someone playing Fire Emblem Awakening and I was like, hey, that's a good game. And then they're like, yeah, I love Fire Emblem. I was like, it's like, what's your favorite? Like, what's your favorite one? They always said that one's like, what about? And I mentioned like the uh, Game Boy Advance games. They're like, there was other ones before this. There's more. And then they play. And then they play, yeah, they, I I fucking hate that yeah. so much. I just and they played one of them, and they're like, I didn't like this one. Final Awakening's better. I'm like, you like something that's mainstream. And that's it's like, the problem. I. And like I need to clarify, I'm not opposed to people, new people getting into this stuff. I like that. What I don't like is when they're not interested in like checking out anything else regard like it, it, in relation to it. If they like that thing, they only like this new thing because it's new, it's trendy, and it's popular, and that's all they really care about. And not like, you know, getting into the other stuff related to that. Like it's like if you really were interested. Why are you not looking into this other stuff? Like, why does it not? I just don't get it. You know, um, I don't know. Maybe it's just the normie thing. They just, they just can't like, they they can't like do any sort of research or anything. They just can't find the time or whatever reason they might have. Yeah, it just becomes a big fucking problem. Yeah, it's uh, it, it gets pretty annoying because it's like you know, like I mentioned with the fade. No, no, they they don't really go back to look at the original visual novel or like the fade animes or anything. All they care about is the Grand Order, and um, because Grand Order just gets constantly fucking updated, they just are addicted to that game, and they don't care about anything yeah. else. Um, because there's other stuff related to that, and they just don't give a no, shit. Of course, they don't give a shit because it's like, hey, this thing's better looking. Or just because it's a, uh, it's one of those mobile gotcha <laughs> games where people will just th- fucking throw money at it so they can get new servants or whatever. Because it's very. Meh. My friend is in the games like that. I just that's another thing. I'm just kind of veering off a little bit. Like I, I don't really understand the, uh, the addiction to like those. Uh, I think they're technically they're called gotcha games, where it's like you know people pay money to. Uh, you know, because it's not just Grand Order. There are other games where you just, like, pay money to... It's pretty much like a microtransaction. You know, you pay money and you get, like, a new thing in the game. A new item or, like, a new uh, whatever, you know. It's like a dice roll. I don't understand the whole gotcha. I thing. don't either. It's like, any game that has, like, pay to like pay to win or pay to play type of the games, I don't understand those at all. Yeah. And that's, like, a huge issue with like mobile games in particular. Yeah. Um. Okay, but I think we've kind of <laughs> gone over a lot of this stuff. Oh, 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 oh. Blah, 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 fuck! I think the whole gotcha games. It kind of falls under the microtransactions type of thing. Yeah, I would say yep. so. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh. We've gone on too long. Way too long, actually. Uh, this is over three hours. I mean, all right. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, uh, yeah. But then again, there's a lot of stuff I need to edit out. So, yeah. um, okay. Um, so I think we've, we've, yeah. To be honest, like we didn't really go too into the fandom stuff. Like we did cover some basic stuff, but. Like we did go on quite a few different tangents, but I feel like it's mostly just because we don't have like a lot of really personal experience with like all these different fandoms. Like there are certain fandoms we can talk about more than others. So, um, but I think we also like kind of covered a lot of the basics. Yeah, we made our own. Um, we we gave it our best shot. Yeah. Um. Anyways, so I think we could probably get to the uh, things that we like this week. Um. Yeah, things we like this week. Do you want to go first? Uh, I actually have a few things in mind. Okay. Yeah, a few of them in mind. Like, uh, 
one of them was like because I work a lot and I drive a lot, so I listen to a, a podcast. Mm-hmm. Sadly, not ours. What podcast? <laughs> but no, it's called the Who's Right podcast. It's uh, if you yeah. know what the official podcast are. Apparently, one of their members promotes the show, and it's actually really good, though. What kind of podcast? Uh, it's they kind of talk about like politics, but it's like two old quote in quotes boomers talking about things. They're like uh, in their like th- like late thirties or early forties, and they're like talking about shit. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing is like Sons of Anarchy because I hadn't seen the show before, and mm-hmm. I started watching it, and it's good. It's like a fictional version of Hell's Angels, but done really good. That's what it seemed like from us. But it's so. good though. I I would recommend you watch it. Yeah, I might have to watch it sometime. And and then the um, third thing would have to be Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two. Just because, fuck it, it's Tony Hawk. Hard to master, but it's good to practice. Yeah, I haven't really played... Uh, I think I might have played one of the Tony Hawk games like a long time ago on the PS1. Probably Pro Skater yeah. 2, 1 or 2. Yeah, I think it might have been 2. You know, the one everyone um, loves. Yeah. Uh. Anyways, so... I guess I'll just go into what I like this week. Um, I'll just say, like, I'll, I'll do, like, a plug for what I've been doing on my channel. Um, I started playing Rule of Rose, which was a game I kind of played on a whim because it was, um, I know a lot of people want to see me play horror games more because I recently ran a Twitter poll where a lot of people seemingly wanted to see me play horror games above all else, which was kind of surprising to me. Um so yeah I might just have to officially make this like a survival horror channel or something <laughs> you should. Um, but yeah I've been playing Rule of Rose and like it's one of those games I've been meaning to play but I never really got around to um, it's basically known for being an ultra rare game on the PS2 um, but so far it's pretty interesting like it has a really interesting premise it, you know it's set in Europe and it is kind of dealing with this like weird child like sort of like a cult I guess it's uh and uh, there's a it takes place first in like a mansion and then on an airship which like not really a lot of I can't really think of a lot of survival horror games that take place on an airship so that's kind of different uh but yeah like I'm really liking it so far I haven't really gotten into the meat of the game though so I'm kind of waiting for that so I'm pretty much just still at the beginning um, but so far it's pretty good and it's one of those games like it's one of those niche games too I kind of wish they would bring the game back and maybe like a remaster or something um, but I guess you know until then we can just play it on the emulator and it runs pretty well on the emulator too so I mean it's like if you can't get a remaster then that's pretty much your best bet huh. um, uh, but so far yeah it's pretty good um, I'm up Rule of Rose right now and same people that made it made mm-hmm. Tulip yeah, um, I think the game was also banned, I think it was in Australia, I think because, and I think it's in the intro cutscene, like, it features, like, a lesbian kiss between, like, two, two little girls, uh, I think. Oh, let's see. Uh, I think I remember, like, hearing about it, it was, like, some kind of controversy, and it was, like, banned, and it was either Australia or some other country, I think it might have been Australia. Australian, can Australia bans a lot of games, though. So. Largely in Celine commentary from the press. Da, 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 da. Um, sadomasochism. Not nor ch- uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I can kind of see that. There's seems like there's some themes of that in the game. Yeah, like I'm seeing, like I'm looking at the game. It looks interesting, but at the same time, I need to see more of it. It's pretty good so far. Like, uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty good survival horror game, but, like, I haven't actually... It feels like it's one of those games that takes a little while to get going because, like, I haven't really encountered any enemies yet, but then I just, like, uh, I pretty much... I'm not even really an hour into the game, so... Uh, I might, might face some enemies eventually. I think um, another game you might enjoy would have to be Shulav. 
Yeah, he told me about Tulip. I'm, I might like it's, that. Um, because well, you said that you like wrote Rule of Rose because Tulip yeah. was supposed to. It's one of those weird games where you're supposed to kiss. Yeah, he, yeah. You described. Yeah, you're supposed to like kiss people or just whatever. to get the girl of your uh-huh. dreams. But I was gonna say like um. Yeah, so there's there's Rule of Rose, and then there's other... Like, I'm, I'm thinking, like, what I might do for my channel is I have some other niche horror games in mind I could probably do playthroughs of. I kind of want to try to do, like, specifically, like, maybe, like, niche horror games, and maybe just try to do playthroughs of those instead of, like, the more popular ones. Um, I think that might be an interesting direction to take the channel if it's, you know, since a lot of people seem to want to see me play specifically uh, horror games. Yeah. Could be interesting. Um, uh, I was going to mention too, in terms of TV shows, like I was at the store the other day and I was just mostly like picking up some clothes and I was at a Target because there's a Target around here. And I was, I've just been kind of disappointed because like I was thinking of seeing if they had a, any decent deals on movies because they have a section of like $5 movies and they used to have some good stuff, but they just don't really have as much anymore. And I, I guess it's probably due to the virus, but they, uh, they only have like one aisle of movies. It's pretty depressing because they used to have like three. Now it's just one. It's really, it's pretty bad. Um, and then the uh, they have TV shows there, and I saw a TV show that like I was really considering, but I didn't get um, because I wasn't too sure about it. Uh, it was called His Dark Materials. His Dark Materials. And it's apparently like um, if you've ever heard of the movie The Golden. Yeah, Compass, it's based off of that. Um, it's yeah the same it's a book series um i didn't really know much about it though so like i didn't pick it up but like after i got back i did some research on it and it seemed like something i would be interested in um but the only thing that kind of turns me away is it's based on like it's technically like a young adult book so not really sure how if i would actually like really enjoy it but apparently it's like one of those things it's like it's because i was like kind of concerned about this i'm like is this like a kid show but apparently it's like it's for everybody, kind of like Star Wars or something, you know, like anybody could watch yeah. it because uh, it has like adult themes. I like it. looking at it too, and uh, apparently it has like a good reception. Yeah, apparently it's kind of a criticism of like organized religion, supposedly, but it's in like a fantasy setting. Yeah, more or less. Um, so that's kind of interesting to me. I was kind of thinking of actually checking it out, but um, yeah, that's another show I've been kind of interested in, <coughs> interested in watching. Um, aside from just uh, me having to uh, watch Bates Motel and also Cobra Kai, there's some pretty good shows that I just started watching. I just sh- probably should have watched a while back that I, I just haven't. Um, uh, but yeah, need to. Uh, now I'm just really ex- excited for Cobra Kai season three. <laughs> but um, probably just be either pirating that or getting that on Blu-ray if it comes out. Either on Blu-ray. or. Um, yeah. Uh, anyways, um, let's see, hey, uh, I think we might just change the question. What fan? I think we might <laughs> change the end question. Uh, what did you want to probably, change? Probably, well, probably we'll call like I said, like what fando where he wants a shame or, or a shame to be a part of. Wasn't that? Oh, like, you what, mean like were you yeah, because that's part of. Really but I want to also like be like. What game are you excited for from the PlayStation event? Oh, did you want to change? I will at this point because we talked about the PlayStation yeah. event. It, it's coming full circle already. So, what game were you excited for? Yeah. Oh, well, you already know my answer. It's uh, Demon Souls remake. Um, pretty much the only game I want to play on there. I thought I. The, the only reason I would even consider buying a console. I thought you were going to get Hogwarts Legacy. Oh, you definitely am. <laughs> no, excited. the game you're excited for is Goodbye Inferno High. Oh, I don't know if that game's ever going to come out, because I think the creator, there's like some controversy with the fucking developers of that game. Are you looking yeah, at uh, Maybe. I think it was something about them, like, um, what was it? Was it? Uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, hmm. 
might have been like a one of them was this is some something to do with pedo shit, possibly. Or furries, I think. Furries or pedos. Wait. What? Uh, <laughs> hang on. Who does she play in here? She did. did, did, did. Uh, no, apparently uh, the person that plays one of the main characters in Goodbye and for High was in The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Oh, and I haven't seen Theo, a trans boy. Yeah, okay, great. great, fun, yay, yay. That, that's, I need uh, progressive themes in my Well, that's again. why, because apparently this, this person is a genderqueer and pansexual. And she got top surgery, and she's a feminist. Oh no! Excuse me. They. <laughs> Zezer. Why? Okay, uh, I'm not. Well, no, 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 no. I, I'm not going to talk about that because it's, it's. We already talked so much earlier. What did you find? No, it's like, wh why the fuck do people use the they and them pronouns? I don't get it. All oh, the pronoun shit. Uh, it's... I, I don't know. I just... I, I feel like I I just am just so disconnected from whatever the fuck stupid shit this generation has produced and come up with in terms of this fucking pronoun shit and these multiple different genders and all this other bullshit. I'm just like, I'm not on board I'm not with on board this. With not one of you. Can, can I die? <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyways, about the PS5 events, uh, what was the uh, game you were most excited for? Uh, <laughs> I actually don't know, honestly. Like, all the games look okay. Like, but if I had to be honest... But nothing, like, stands out. Probably for me, it would have to be Odd World. Yeah, it's because it looks interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. They're just the problem with for me is just there. There just wasn't much. There's like a handful of stuff, and most of it isn't really even exclusive. Yeah. Is there? But uh, anyways. Um, might be a good place to end it. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Yeah, so, as always, uh, here are my links on screen. And uh, I will now be showing levies. And yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. It was, uh, I don't think we really had quite, I will be honest, I don't think we had like quite as much to say about fandoms as we did about some, like, some of the other topics we've covered on this podcast. It we kind of did go a little bit too much into tangents, but I mean, nothing wrong with that because, you know, a lot of this podcast is just us pretty much shooting yeah. shit. It just turned um, into like an so. impromptu, kind of like an improvised podcast where it's not really topic based. Yeah. Um, what was the next podcast on, actually? Weren't, weren't you like trying to come up with something <laughs> for that? Or... Kind of. I kind of want to try something on that. I'll figure something out. Let's see. When will be the next podcast? Yeah, because I know for a fact Pretty soon the after. next two podcasts will be fairly normal until we get to September or October. Like you, <laughs> okay, when September ends, we'll wake up Green Day and do Halloween stuff. <laughs> well, Halloween is canceled this year, don't you know? Because the, the the virus... Can't go trick or treating, kids. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. Go that cut out too when you're. God damn it. <laughs> Stop. Cut out again. Get some help. Okay, well that, that went through, but Vader saying no didn't go through. Well, fuck. Nope. Everything you like is canceled now because of the virus. Uh. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, not sure what we're going to do for the next podcast. I guess we'll figure that out. But, um, regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Oh, 
fuck up with you. Well, fine. Powers. That one's better than the fucking Vader anyway. <laughs> um. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one. And uh, until next time, we will 